Okay, here we are. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Good evening. Howdy. Uh, tonight we are joined by uh, Brian Grissom, a.k.a. Undammed, who made the really awesome uh, UD USB decoder, which you can do a, uh, a DB15 to USB, and I'm going to be playing some Neo Geo games with my arcade stick that I showed in the, uh, in the most recent episode. And, uh, you know, I, I, I saw uh, I saw all of those Twitter DMs back and forth between you two, and I, it, I, I, I never really paid that much attention to it. And so I'm like, I have no idea who this person is Corey's talking to. But <laughs> this, and then I finally figured it out after you released the episode. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, because I, I had a very silly issue at one point with it that I is like completely my fault. Uh, it just like for some reason it did it stopped working on my hardware, and uh, I've kind of figured it out now. You know, sometimes it takes a few seconds for it to start working. I think that's maybe because I'm using that uh, the extension, the controller extension. Mm. Uh, but I felt very very silly afterwards. Because I, I mailed it off to Brian. I said, this is, I, it just like suddenly stopped working. And he's like, it works <laughs> fine here. <laughs> now I get it home and it works fine. I have no idea why I could not get it to work. Well, you know, I, I, had, I, I have had some dumb situations like that with some of the stuff I've been testing where I just like, why, why, is, it not, why is it not displaying on the screen? I don't get it. And then I <laughs> figure out something really stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it's like always like the most simple answer. Yeah. I don't know when something like doesn't work like for a moment you you think well, why is it not working? And you kind of panic, <laughs> which I think yep. is what exactly what I did. So this this arcade stick that you're using, I, I remember uh, it was like when you were still in New York City. You were like you, you got this real itch to make like a fighting game stick. Uh, what game were you playing at the time that made you want to do that? I forget. Well, it's mainly because the the WWE Brawl Stick is like known to be it's like it was like the cheapest one that's completely customizable, like easily customizable, I guess. And I think the Amazon had it a deal for uh I think it was like like 29.99 I paid for it. And then I just like put my own buttons and and actual like joystick in it. Mm. And it was uh yeah, I mean, it, 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 <laughs> I had a lot of fun building it, and then I didn't really use it for anything. It was mainly because I was, you know, Street Fighter Four was pretty new at the time. I said, oh, I'll, I'll use it for this. And I just really didn't do anything with it until I got this adapter. Now I use it all the time. <laughs> so, Brian, where did, where did the, uh, the idea to make this adapter kind of come from? Well, um, actually, the... The USB interface in general um, started out inside a uh, consoleized CPS2. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with CPS2 at all. Oh yeah, you guys? yeah. Okay. So, um, so I kind of had this this uh, outstanding project to build um, a super gun for myself because I'd kind of kludged together some like shoebox style stuff, but never never done something that I was proud of or would ever want to show to anybody. And so um, then later on, I got into CPS2, and I thought, man, this thing already looks like a console. It's just this nice plastic case, just like any other game system. And I thought, well, I, I play a lot of CPS2. Why don't I just build all these super gun stuff into it? Mm -hmm. You know, the power supply, the video encoder. And then for the controls, um, you know, most people for super guns, they just use kind of like what your super gun has, that, that DB15 pinout on the right. front. Um, so you can use just anything. You could wire up whatever you want, um, just with discrete buttons, discrete joystick. But I wanted something a little bit more slick, um, and I wanted people. My, I guess what I wanted to do is make it as modern console-like as possible. Right. Which, which would mean using off-the-shelf everything. So for the video interface, it uses an off-the-shelf PlayStation cable. For the controller interface, I needed it to go with something modern, which at the time was PS3 and Xbox 360. And so um, I thought, okay, well, here I go down the rabbit hole because I've never done anything <laughs> USB before. 
Um, and so I started doing some research and reading on it. And it's really interesting how all that USB stuff works. And um, just started working with a, a small USB development kit and um, came up with a board. And so um, that uh, what I called the UDCPS2 was that consoleized CPS2 that um, started gaining traction in um, um, some notable uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo tournaments. Mm -hmm. So all these old man games, so Vampire Savior, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and some others, people were really into those, and so they started using these systems. And I thought, you know what? It'd be cool for people who aren't into the CPS2 stuff to be able to utilize this USB interface too. And so um, I uh, started working on some some little board designs, came up with the one that's got screw terminals for people to wire into whatever they can dream up. And then there's that 15-pin one that you have that you, that would be more for people who aren't quite do-it-yourself. They just want to plug something in and have it work. And there's enough super guns out there that have that 15-pin interface that, um, you know, I felt that would meet a lot of people's needs. Yeah, I mean, it's... I I'd actually uh, was pointed towards your stuff when I... Uh, was just first lo looking into getting a, a super gun, and a guy who lo owns a local arcade here in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, pointed me towards yours. And then I, when I was kind of researching super guns themselves, um, I saw that yours, you can get your encoders like built into, like I got mine through Jason's, Jason's Customs, and he has like a whole board that you just, is your, uh, the USB, you just like put it right in. He puts it right in and builds it right in. To yeah, it. yep. That's cool. I mean, so do you, like, did you work with him to do that? Yeah, I did. It's actually a custom board for his, um, for his, con for his super guns. Mm -hmm. So he asked me about the design and um, we kind of just made a game plan and. Because um, his super guns are basically like the, like the most premium super guns probably yeah, around. Yeah, they are. Um, I was so happy for him when he started doing that because um, uh, really it's been a long time since I've seen a quality super gun and definitely not one from the United States. Probably the better ones in Japan were Sigma and some and a few other companies. Mm -hmm. um, and those and those still command pretty serious prices. Plus, you'd have to import it, right? And they're just these big metal boxes, so it's, that's definitely not cheap to ship. <laughs> and um, and then you paid a lot for it, so you're gonna want to you know probably use EMS, which is gonna be like you know hundreds of dollars in shipping. So right. Anyways, but um so yeah, so U.S. based outfit, you know, doing super solid. What's he call them? Like tank sticks and you know whatnot. You know all these all these things that he has that are just these nice solid setups. And mm -hmm. it looks like he's really done his homework. I mean, all the components he's using are really good. Um. Yeah, so just uh, my experience with him has been really good. Seems like a really nice guy. And so we just worked out a deal. I sent him schematics. He kind of came up with a variant of, uh, of my design to, to put into his. And, um, yeah, it's worked out good. It's funny because, you know, when I was first, like, researching and stuff, I was originally looking to uh, get a Mac strike, and then I saw that <laughs> that there was an issue with, the way that they were wired up were, was frying your the uh, the decoder when it was plugged yeah. in. Yeah, right. And that pretty much like sealed it, kind of like that. I didn't want to get a Mac strike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, it's kind of funny. As I'm sitting here, I've got a bunch of stuff on my desk for um, for the next uh, ironing out the next rev of the um, the 15 pin decoders. Mm -hmm. Um, to remedy that problem with the Mac strikes. Um, and really what the problem was, was um, the way that it switches power um, is just, it's not the way that I would have done it. And um, it would have been very easy for the whoever designed the Mac Strike to have done it better, <laughs> in my right. opinion. Right. But anyways, it just causes these huge voltage spikes that uh, it's basically impossible for my board to cope with. You know, it's supposed to run off five volts and there's these 15 volt spikes, you know, I mean, nothing on there is designed to survive that. And so I've been um, actually working on a, um, basically a over voltage suppression um, to put into the board design for the next spin that I do. And um, it looks like it's like leagues better. I mean, I've done, you know, hundreds of cycles, hundreds of power cycles with the max strike um, setup and um, not seen any issues. And I've looked at it on the oscilloscope and it looks pretty clean and stuff. So 
um, I'm good. pleased with first one, yeah. So you and you you hand build these, all right? With the um, ones that you provide to, uh, or do you have somebody that that makes? Them? I actually have a I actually have a local um, friend. He's he's actually a coworker. He he works in our production area, and then I work in the engineering. And so, um, yeah, we were just talking one day. He's like, yeah, if you ever need me to solder anything, I was like, sweet, let's do it. And so. <laughs> He's been my guy for, I don't know, at least a couple years, and um, he does a really good job. Um, he, I try and offer him more money because I think he's worth a lot more than he's willing to accept, but when it comes time for me to pay him for his work, he's like, oh, that's way too much. And I'm like, dude, just come on, <laughs> let me sleep better at night and get you more money. So, um, but he's a great guy, and um, so he does most of the soldering for me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start. Yeah. I'm going to play some Metal Slug 3 first. Which uh, which metal slug did you? You've streamed metal slug at least once or twice before. Which yeah, which I did metal slug that? a long time ago. That was like our third stream, I think, that we ever did. Really? Yeah, it was uh, right after the the in the hunt episode. That was last you, summer. You um, it was it like you streamed like maybe one of the much newer ones, like seven maybe. Uh, it was six, I think. Okay, I think it was. Five that I played at Magfest, um, on an actual Neo Geo cabinet. Um, I think it was five. It was the one. It was like a alien invasion thing. Yeah, this one has quite a bit of alien invasion stuff on it. Yeah, for all I know, this series could do that a lot more frequently than I know. Yeah. Uh, the only the only other Metal Slug I've really played is the original i played the uh the neo geo version through the wii virtual console oh right right i i i wasn't as big of a fan of it as i had hoped but it's it's still a series that's like i i i i still feel compelled to play more of the games because they just look so nice mm -hmm. yeah yeah great animation Pretty much everything uh, Nazca did was, uh, or Nazica, I can't remember how to pronounce it, um, was pretty amazing. But I don't know if that team spilled over into the later ones. Like in, I think, I think they might have stopped at three and somebody else picked it up, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I sure. feel like they probably got bored of it <laughs> after a while. <laughs> could be, could be. Because there was a there was yeah. a big gap between like three and four, like making mm. them, I think. I, I don't know if that was with, like, the Playmore changeover or what. I can't remember what was going on at the time. So how many different devices would you say that the decoder supports? Um, like, how many different controllers? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, I know you're constantly adding stuff to it. Well, um, the so there's kind of, like, a base driver that, that works with most stuff. So really, most of the things that I end up adding are the exceptions, things that didn't work right. Um, so, so out the door, um, like, uh, I'd say, um, I mean the, for the driver that it's shipping with now, um, I don't know, probably like, I don't know, at least 90% of what's out there. I mean, as far as PS3 and Xbox 360, mm -hmm. um, there's, um, there are some exceptions. Like I've found that some, uh, some converters don't work well with it. Like um, if somebody has a, uh, like for example, a PS2 to um, a PS2 to PS3 adapter. Like there's quite a few of those out on you can find online. Some of them uh, do work with it, and mm -hmm. some of them don't. I don't know if it's like a timing thing when it's powering up or what. But um, so there's a few exceptions out there. There's a few controllers. I've kind of got a laundry list of controllers that have. Um, some some of the button mapping um, when you when you first plug in the default button mapping isn't quite right um, and you can remedy a lot of those by going into the custom mapping mode but my goal is is for people to not have to use the custom mapping mode right unless they have some weird personalized setup but I want for as much as possible to have the default setup actually make sense um, so but, I mean, out the door, I'd say, like, 90% of the stuff that's out there is going to work okay. That's based on feedback I've had. So. I remember seeing, like, a forum post where somebody was asking for, like, keyboard support. Oh, yeah. 
I've I've considered that, and it and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too difficult to implement, but it's definitely down on my list of <laughs> of uh, priorities. So I've I do have the um, PS4 and Xbox One support does actually work. I just haven't released that driver because there was a something I have to fix with the memory um, kind of a memory leak of sorts uh, that needs to be remedied, but. Um, I know the source of the problem, and I just need to fix it. So um, I I gave a few people um, beta um, beta firmware for that, and they said that it worked fine, barring that known issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I just need to um, finalize that and release it. What would be the uh, what would be the application of of uh, using a keyboard? Because I mean, everything you all are talking about is is way outside <laughs> my. Uh, <laughs> my my world of understanding. These are these are not uh, systems and interfaces that I have hardly any experience with. Yeah, um, at least the people that that I've talked to that the suggested keyboard support is there's some people who um, play on this thing called Fightcade. Have you heard of that before? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um, so so that would allow um, people who. Uh, now a lot of people use Fightcade use you know a regular joystick, but some people have gotten accustomed to playing with keyboard, and then if they go to um, a tournament where, I mean, those old games aren't aren't played uh, as like headlining games you know like main mm-hmm. stage and stuff typically, but the, a lot of times there'll be small side tournaments at at, um, at big uh, fighting tournament gatherings, and so if somebody's been doing most of their practicing on a keyboard on Fightcade. Then they go to one of these events and they gotta kind of like get back in the saddle on their joystick. Um, mm. People just they they would be more comfortable just going from keyboard to keyboard, but um, it's definitely the minority. I mean, a <laughs> lot of people, a lot of uh, people who would be playing against somebody on the keyboard probably would think strangely of it and <laughs> might not approve. Just because there's there's some things that you can do with a keyboard. Because it requires such little movement of your fingers mm. versus moving a whole joystick or whatever, yeah. there's some movement you can do that you you might have a technical advantage on mm. uh, with a keyboard. So I don't know. Everybody has their preferences. So on a yeah, chat saying we should it's a big grab opportunity for Corey and try to do a future show on playing another Metal Slug online through Fightcade. Mm. Okay. But yeah, that's uh, you know kind of like on the the N64 uh, or GameCube to N64 adapter, you know, as I was customizing the button placement, like especially for Mischief Makers, I was able to find that like, hey, there's like some moves that you know because that that game is you know a pretty tough game to control. There's there's a lot of very technical movement and a lot of very challenging jumps that you have to do with dashing and stuff. And I was like, hey, I can do, like, all these dashes now with my finger never getting quite off the A button. So, you know, and otherwise, that's actually very difficult to do. So I was like, huh, there, there can actually be a pretty good advantage here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's there's some interesting stuff you can do with this kind of stuff that I, I'd never really considered. Like, when, when Corey first said, you know... I want to do an episode on controller adapters. I was like, oh yeah, okay, that'd be cool. <laughs> if that flips your boat, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah. I know you were a lot more interested in it at first than I was, and you said, you know, I want you to do the the N64 uh, adapter because you know I, I like N64 a heck of a lot more than you do. Except the thing is, I like actually like the N64 controller, so I'm thinking, why would why, I want to use this? Why would why yeah? Why would I, I want to do this? But then when I started playing around with it, I was like, oh, there's like all kinds of possibilities here, and it like actually works really well. And like I, I when I started testing it, I I like really hadn't even looked into it that much. I didn't even know that it was like customizable and stuff. Like so, there's like some awesome stuff you can do with it. That's kind of the biggest thing, you know. Like I think even with the the decoder and and the N64. Uh, GameCube to N64, you know, is that they're customizable, and that, that opens up a lot more possibilities than just like a typical yeah. adapter. I, I really need to spend some time just like looking at the RafNet site because there is like, like just so many devices. 
yeah that that guy makes and i don't i don't even have a clue what all is possible like at first you know i saw some people in the comments talking about um a super nintendo to wii i think it was super nintendo oh no super Super nintendo Nintendo GameCube. gamecube yeah yeah um that you know they were using as a hori pad alternative um and uh, I mean that sounds awesome. And I think there is a, a Super Nintendo to Wii as well. And at first I was like, eh, I don't think I need that now. So I think, man, I could probably come up with some uses for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, if if I started uh, if I started looking around there too closely, I'm worried I might might spend too much money. <laughs> but, uh, like a lot a lot of a lot of those adapters are like what like twenty U S dollars or yeah something. yeah. They're, I mean they're they're not they're, they're not that bad yeah not expensive at all i mean just in general like most of them are not yeah i'm not sure what the shipping from canada tends to be yeah that's true it 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 has become expensive to ship things to canada i've recently discovered but i think (laughs) it's still i think it's still not too bad shipping out of canada See, I just uh, I love using this controller on the Neo Geo more so than the uh, the kidney bean stick that I have. I, I, this <laughs> just feels so much more authentic to me. How do you feel about the about the not the kidney bean stick, but the the clicky stick? Oh, the uh, the, the regular just the AES pad? stick. No, the regular AES stick. Whatever. Oh, you know, that. it's funny because I've only I I barely used it. Okay. And I just. You know, like I've only been an owner of the system since since like February, I think. February, okay. January, February is when I got it. Oh wow, so relatively new. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I've always, you know, like I grew up playing a lot of games in the arcade. It's just it's the Neo Geo to me was always, you know, you rental stores would have it because it was way too expensive. You know, like as a kid, when I was a kid, for me to ever own one. Right. And I guess like that kind of mentality for a long time kind of just just stuck with me, knowing that I could never really afford it. <laughs> uh. But I mean, you know, it's it's really cool to have it now. I mean, I only have two like real uh, MBS cards. Mm. Well, actually, only one real one. Uh, I mean, this is just a multi card. This is a one twenty and one. Oh. Okay. But I have a, like a, uh, the uh, Ironclad, which was yep. like the one that, yep. which I think is a, has a really cool kind of story to it in the way that it was made and that they couldn't, they were able to finally make a cartridge version of it because they got the ROM from the, like the Wii Virtual Console or something. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that's crazy. You told me about that. Um, and other than that, I have uh, Shock Troopers, which is an amazing mm-hmm. game. Yep. That yeah, I've great. been I've I've been saying, you know, if if I ever end up uh, going your way, we 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 have to uh, we have to co-op that. Yeah. I'll, I'll use the PlayStation controller. That would yeah, be more you, my you know, that, that would be good... more my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not, uh, I've never been good with arcade sticks. Yeah, I mean, you were never much of an arcade. No, gamer. I mean, I just, I mean, you know, when when I was a kid and, you know, I was in the mall and, you know, my mom was shopping, my dad would take me to the arcade and, you know, I I played Ninja Turtles and yeah. not a lot else. Uh, Which is the know, only later, arcade later board on, that I actually have. Yeah, I mean, later on, I, um... You know, I, if I ever went into a place that had arcades, you know, I I, I, I got into stuff like uh, House of the Dead and whatnot mm-hmm. a little bit. But, you know, arcade visits were, were never, never a big deal for me. I've, I've always been a, a home console sort. Huh. Brian, I noticed in the background, like when we were talking before the, the stream started, that you have a like a really huge... Looks like a X Men versus Street Fighter poster back there. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love that thing. I um, a number of years ago, um, I found I can't remember if it was on eBay or Yahoo Japan, but I found somebody selling a bunch of uh, Capcom posters, 
And I actually got that one for a pretty reasonable price. I think it was like. Is I don't it know. like official? Oh yeah, that's like oh, the really? actual like arcade promotional poster. That's um, and I got it for like thirty bucks or something. It was mint. And so, um, uh, I don't I don't plan on reselling it. So I actually um, had it dry mounted um, just to keep it smooth. Because I don't know, I've I've had some other collectible posters that I I didn't have dry mounted. I just had them framed and stuff. But there's like waves and ripples in them, and they just I don't know. I don't like the look. And so. For something that I don't ever plan on selling, um, I had it dry mounted and framed, and um, I think all in all, uh, I might have like 120 bucks into it or something. I mean, nice framing is not cheap. That's that's the stinky part about you know finding some nice video game art. You're like, oh, I should totally put this up and make it look good. It's like, yeah, there's goes a hundred dollars in framing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I love it. It looks great. I've got that, and then uh, next to it is a, a Mars Matrix poster. Oh, great game, great game. I have the uh, I have the Dreamcast version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Dreamcast port is like super faithful. I think there's a little bit of a video tweak you can do, like if you, you go into make the menu. Right now, you can make it 240p. Uh, if you hold down like like Y and B when you boot up, it you can you can make it 240p. I mean, that's yeah, there's that, but in I remember in one of the menus, there's like this. Um, I can't remember if it's like a, like a, um, an aspect ratio feature or what. But I remember in one of the menus, like if you dial it in, you can actually make it um, like pixel for pixel, you know, matched up with the arcade. But really? I can't remember what the setting was. Yeah, I'm sure if you do some googling for, uh, you know, Dreamcast Mars Matrix resolution or something, you might be able to find a the settings for that but yeah great game um i see somebody in the chat saying i should play the uh, the bootleg king of fighters you know i would do that but for some reason if you're playing as mai and she and you do one of her moves like it's like a hack and it makes her completely naked <laughs> so, so i can't you really accidentally do that on stream huh yeah. What was um, <clears throat> there was a game I saw someone ask uh, ask what it was I don't know maybe this is it for all I know there was um, uh, it looked like Ninja Bionic Commando is that this? oh the one in the in the yeah that was uh, that's in I'll play that uh, in a little bit that's one that I it's like 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 Gen Ryu or something like that yeah, it's it like in in the uh, in the episode for like a split second that's pretty cool so um on this multi-cart that you have mm-hmm. like have you played through all the games that are on it uh, i i mean i haven't played through them but i've i've tried out probably like a good amount of them like how many of those are legit because i know on some of those multi-carts yeah, there's there's, some... there's a whole bunch that are not that are just uh like there's like metal sug 2 plus or something like that that are just like hacks <laughs> nice it's 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 that's kind of annoying. So it's really it's not really 120 games in one. It's like. But for the price, it's it's still probably hard to beat. Well, yeah. I mean, considering the the price that most of these games go for. Yeah. Yeah, the the thing that that surprised me <laughs> was that you know once you got your super gun, you were telling me about some of the arcade board prices. Like in a lot of ways, collecting for arcade is maybe even cheaper than for even MVS. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. Yeah, it depends. It, yeah but I, I guess I was surprised that, like, the arcade boards, like, yes, they are expensive, but in my mind, anything that's, like, part of an arcade machine should be, like, astronomically expensive, and it's really not in, in many cases. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Brian, how many yeah, arcade games do you have? Um... Excluding CPS2, like I have basically a full CPS2 collection. That's like 40 really? something titles. But, um, but for just like the bare, you know, circuit board arcade games, um, not as many as I used to. But I've still probably got, I don't know, maybe like 50 something. Um, I've sold off a lot as just as time has gone on and um, the price has blown up on some games. Um, you know, there'll be a game that I haven't played for years, and, you know, I have fond memories of it, but I don't really plan on hitting it hard anymore. Right. And if I find out that it's worth 500 you you'll be like, dude, I'm taking the 500 <laughs> Yeah. You know? So I've done that a number of times. Uh, what are some ones you've gotten rid of? 
for prices like that? Um, I think the most recent was um, Dangon Feveron. Have you played that? Mm -mm. It's a it's a cave shooter. Oh, okay. It's a it's probably the most fast paced cave shooter um, that they ever did. Um, there's a speed selection. If you crank it up, it's like pretty ridiculous. Um, but it's a disco themed uh, space shooter, which is kind of <laughs> kind of unique. That and it's great. got all these really cheesy one liners and stuff. And oh man, it's a, it's a blast. Right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, you should you should look it up. It's a blast. And it's never been um, ported anywhere, obviously. Um, not to my knowledge, unless it was some like. I know that Cave ventured out a few times and released stuff on cell phones, so I don't know if there's a cell phone version of it or what, but um, no, definitely no console releases. Um, but uh, yeah, that was actually one of the first PCBs that I ever got, and I think I, I think I got it for I want to say like 120 bucks or something, which for me was kind of a stretch because I was just getting into PCBs, and this was many, many years ago. It was probably like a decade ago, and I was like, oh, I don't know, that's a lot of money. But um, I was happy with the purchase. It was, it was a great game. And then um, I eventually got um, some of the artwork that came with it, and that always boosts the value. And there was a guy on the Shmups forum that was looking for one, and I was like, you know what? I think I can let go of this. And so he uh, he paid me handsomely for it. And Wow. Yeah. Um, and then the one before that was another crazy game that I couldn't pass up selling. This was a really cool story. Are you... Do you guys like Strider at all? Like oh, Capcom's yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, I, I feel like I know where you're going with this. Is this a okay. Osman? Huge Strider fan. Yeah, I had, a, I had an Osman kit. Oh, man. And and this was this was what was crazy. So this guy on Shmups, he went by the name of Venom. Um, he, uh, he'd he been around for a while, and he was... Um, um, he seemed like a, like a pretty dedicated score player. Mm -hmm. um, he did some cool stuff, but he... Uh, um, one day, he's like, oh, yeah, by the way... Um, I got a lead on these Osman kits, and he's like, just let anybody who's interested let me know. And I was like, all right. And so um, I think they were, I want to say they were like 320. I want to say it was 320, like including shipping for this kit. And um, and come to find out, his his lead, his contact, was somebody from Mitchell themselves, like the <laughs> developer. They are like offloading these kits. So when I get this in the mail, it's like, address like from Mitchell to me <laughs> wow. and so um, that was like a pretty awesome you know thing to have and so I played it and had a lot of fun with it for years and um, it's a killer game it's like a thousand dollars though now oh, for like yeah, a real one I've seen conversions that are uh, like five, 400 or something recently. yeah yeah just for a conversion um, and on Yahoo Japan they go for about two grand Wow, um, and that's about what I got for mine from a like. It's kind of funny. These two collectors contacted me, and they're both going at it. They're like, "No, I want it more. I want it more." And so it's almost like this like manual bidding thing, where like one person would be like, "Oh, I'll offer you two hundred more." No, I'll offer you two hundred more. I was like, "All right, keep it going." <laughs> and so finally, finally, one guy settled it, and um, yeah, so. I was willing to give it up at that point because yeah, I just I mean, didn't play it enough to justify keeping it. It's an awesome game, though. It really. Oh is. yeah. I got a it's chance killer. to play it at Magfest this past uh, this past uh, January or was it February? Uh, somebody who like was working in the arcade there recently just like got a real board for it, and then nice. I I nice. it's one of those games you'd it, it, like it's almost kind of like mythical, I guess. Yep. And that, you know, like a lot of people have never really seen it in real life. Had always heard yeah. about it and it, that it was awesome. But, like, most people have never played it. Mm hmm Yeah, so for so for uh, big Strider fans to find out that, you know, there was this this uh, offshoot, you know, it's just, yeah, like, like you said, it's like this legendary thing. Mm-hmm. And it's so just, there was actually... it's, it's such a fun game. I mean, it's... It's tough. It gets really tough at the end because even if you just like continue and continue and continue, it always sends you back to this uh, like a checkpoint. I couldn't finish it. Was... Yeah, there's a few there's a few sections um, where you actually have to know what you're doing. Like credit feeding isn't going to get you past a particular section. Right. Um, I was never I never got good enough to um, to one credit it, but I actually know quite a few people of one credit it. Like once you figure out the strategy for each section. Um, it's pretty doable, but I I never I never uh, was dedicated enough to 
um, to get there. But uh, I wonder yeah, why it never got ported anywhere. I don't know. Um, Mitchell, uh, I mean, really, the only thing I know of that, uh, that, that ever made it outside of arcades for Mitchell was um, their Buster Brothers stuff, or Pang, they mm -hmm. call it, in Japan. Um, those, those got ported to pretty much everything. Um, and then they had a game called, uh, uh, what was it? Something, something taco. It, like in <laughs> Japanese, um, taco <laughs> means octopus. And so it was like this octopus uh, puzzle game. And I think that made it to cell phones eventually. But other than that, I don't think Mitchell really ventured outside of arcade stuff. So um, I don't know. There's a lot of companies that have that that lack of vision when it comes to consoles and ports and stuff. That's true. I mean, but considering the popularity of, of Strider on consoles, yeah, at least. Even, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think at this point it would be a, a huge hit. Yeah. But I, who even a, knows what they would have to go through to get that release now? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who picked up... Uh, the remains of Mitchell, I'm pretty sure. I, well, I don't know if they're still in business or not. They might still be in business, but I don't know that. I don't. I'm almost positive they're not doing arcade stuff anymore. So, so probably I, just uh, probably just the original owner keeps that company in his back pocket for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you're a big CPS2 uh, fan, then obviously, I mean, uh, you you. I'm sure you've been following the. Like they've decoded like the suicide batteries and stuff now. Yeah, yeah. It's you know the guy one of the guys who does that is a, a good friend of of our show, uh, Artemio Urbina. Did the um, 240p oh, test? Oh yeah, yeah, week. yeah. Yep, nice. Yeah, he does a lot of our fact checking and stuff for our um, cool. RGB episodes. Oh, that's great. That's great. He has a pretty <laughs> crazy uh, PCB collection himself. Yeah, and he there's... makes uh, like cases for them. You were hoping to maybe get some. Makes oh no, he or something. Maybe I was confused. Like to about store what it them was. in. He doesn't just like. <laughs> I feel like most people probably store their arcade PCBs in like. U.S. Postal Service shipping boxes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the easy way to do it. I mean, that's what I, I um, have been doing at least. An, yeah, a number of years ago, I um I hopped on Uline. And well, actually, before that, I measured all my PCBs and got the general dimensions and kind of figured out like, um, okay, well, I took those dimensions and I looked on Uline and saw what was available. And then I kind of grouped them into families like, OK, you know, this series of boards is going to fit in this type of box and this series of boards is going to fit in this type of box. And I got, I think, like three or four different sizes and that pretty much met the needs for most of my collection. Um, and those are great because um, uh, for some of the smaller boards, you don't have to take up as much space as as a big U.S. postal box. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some there are some oddball boards that are just like extra tall, like they've got these huge heat sinks, or just like extra big in general. So for those, you just gotta go out and rummage through dumpsters or something. Is there any particular ones that you're really after now? Uh, no. For a while, pretty much. I was just trying to complete my CPS2 collection, which um, I'm almost done with. I basically need one more. Um, What's the last and one you need? It's the stupid, expensive Rockman 1. Because Rockman 2 is, is very easy to come by. Oh, the they, fighting game? Yeah, they, well, there's two of them. There's, there was a CPS1 Rockman game, and then they... And then, uh, I think it was called Power Fighters, right, or something like that. And then, and then Power Battles or whatever the second one was came out on CPS two, but for some strange reason they ported the CPS one version and released that on CPS two as well. So that Rockman one for CPS two is extremely hard to come by. I've never, I think, um, only recently did I ever see it come up for auction. And I'd seen pictures of it, but it was always from private collections. And nobody I talked to ever wanted to let them go. So, um, unfortunately, that's the last of the <laughs> of the uh, hard to get ones. So um, I don't know. We'll see. So it's more I of guess a waiting I'm not game a... than anything else. What's that? It's more of a waiting game than anything else. 
Exactly. Yeah, and and I'm and I'm a, a big penny pincher. So I mean, if you wanted to complete a CPS2 collection in in a couple years or something, it probably wouldn't be too big of a deal. I think most everything comes up pretty often, except for that rock band game. <laughs> so uh, that's that's the one. But uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of great games on this system. I I really enjoy it. So. Need to see if. Um... There's a store not too far from me that um, sort of specializes in selling arcade, like, refurbished or or not refurbished, if they don't need it, I guess, uh, arcade cabinets. I need to see uh, for, you know, you're, you're visiting uh, here next month. I need to see if, uh, they, ha- if they have any just boards, because that might be a good resource for you if you... Want to add a few to your collection? <laughs> yeah, well. I mean, I constantly what? look on eBay. I mean, there's a few what that I... What are some I of your li- priorities? Um, I really want to get uh, this game called Thunder Fox. It's a uh, Taito... Uh, I, I, I'm actually going to do an episode on the, the Genesis version. It's it's a uh, fighting an army with nothing but a knife game. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess one I would like to, to get. Uh, I mean, I would like to get uh, SNK's uh, POW. This is kind of like a beat 'em up. I think I had that at one point. Yeah, it's it's not too pricey. I think I've seen it. It's like generally like seventy bucks or something. You know, I didn't have that. I had one similar to it. It was called um, Caliber Fifty. Oh, okay. But it's another. It's another like one dude, you know, trying to break out of a prison camp or whatever he's doing. Yeah. I might, I don't think I've ever played that, but I'm like I've heard the name. Mm. Uh, what else is there? Um, I mean, the Thunder Fox is one I've been kind of looking at, looking for. I would, li- I, <laughs> I'd like to have gold, get Golden Axe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like I'm a big Sega. Uh, arcade fan, so I would love to get Golden Axe. Uh, yeah, that... I mean, especially like Revenge of Death Adder that never got a home release. Yeah, that one. I don't know if it's gone down, but for whatever goofball reason, um, I think maybe like a year or so ago, um, on eBay there is this just like series of of uh, expensive auctions. They were going for like four hundred dollars, which Jeez. before that they, they definitely weren't going for that much. So I don't know if it's calmed down at all, but more than I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah. I mean, it's... it. I mean, I might at some point, but I gotta be in, like... I gotta know that I have nothing else coming up. <laughs> I guess. That Which you need to buy, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or want to buy. Right. But, I mean... Yeah, I, um... I, I'm still happy that, um... Some of my more memorable... Um... Arcade PCBs weren't that expensive. Like um, one of my favorite shooters, and it's not like the most technical, and it's, I guess it's not even entirely exciting. It's just kind of relaxing to play. Is called Thundercade. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That's the I I played the NES version. It's the Jeep game. Yeah. So the arcade one is is great. I'm, I mean, I'm assuming it's better than the NES one. I haven't played the NES one, um, but it's a it's a um, a vertical screen game, um, so you get a little bit more real estate on screen than you would on the NES. Um, but I got that, uh, including like the marquee and stuff and the manual, I think for like 25, including shipping, like this is back in the day, but you know, um, and I just kind of got it on a whim cause it was cheap and it ended up being a great game. I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> um, so I still got that one. And, um, there was a game, well, the Mr. Driller series is great and those are pretty cheap too, or at least when I bought them, they were cheap. Um, but that team, uh, Team Driller or whatever they're called from Namco, they made another game called Star Trigon. Did you ever see that mm. before? I have not. It's a single. It's a single button game. Really. And so what it and so what it is is um, there's all these little planets on the screen, and then orbiting around the planets are these little alien things that you, your goal is to pick them all up, or rescue them or something. And so you're orbiting around this planet when you start out, and when you hit the button, you break you break the planet's orbit and you just shoot off at whatever trajectory, you know, you were going at when you hit the button. 
And so your goal is to not float off into nowheresville in space. Your goal is to is to re-enter the orbit of another planet. That circle sounds around almost it. like uh, mighty mighty Milky Way. Is that is that mighty Milky Way? Uh, I've never played that, but it might be the same type of a deal. As um, like a as a way forwards uh, on the as a DS DSi game. Okay, okay. So yeah, so I I found um, that Star Trek on board way back when and. I fell in love, man. It was a great game. I think it was like twenty dollars. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. PCBs have gotten a lot more expensive, but um, yeah, probably a decade ago. I mean, you could pick up quite a bit of stuff for twenty to fifty dollars. You could get a lot of stuff. You probably feel very fortunate, especially with like prices the way that they are now. You got into yeah. it when you did. Yeah. Yeah, it's always so weird to, <clears throat> you know start getting into these other aspects and it's like you know there's people who have been doing this stuff for years and years and years but you know like you know just what three four years ago rgb was a whole new world to us and like just yep. to think people who've been doing this you know for so long it's like why didn't anyone tell us about that you know yeah i remember <laughs> Like, did you guys look at video game magazines back in the day? Like, oh, yeah. Electronic Gaming Monthly and stuff? Yeah, I'm a huge, the... huge magazine fan. I could... Yeah, so I remember looking at that stuff. I was probably in junior high. I remember flipping through the back, and they would have um, those uh, those ads for... Um, uh, like Game like Cave and stuff? The... What's that? I always think of, like, Game Cave. Was like... Oh, I don't... I don't remember that one. Was that a store that would advertise in the back? Yeah, it was like main. I think it was in mainly in like Game Fan. Okay, but I just remember seeing you know like these black and white ads for all these um, peripherals and whatnot. Some of them were like um, you know professional arcade controller or whatever you know for your Super Nintendo. And then I even saw um, uh, RGB cables for the Super Nintendo. And then the monitors for like you know three or four hundred bucks. And I was like. <laughs> Really? Is it gonna look that much better? And I just, I never, I never processed it. It was just like, okay, whatever. Who's gonna buy this? And then, like you said, you know, eons later, I actually see what it looks like in RGB, and I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've been into it for a while, then. I know that well, you said I, a couple of days ago that you've been, you've been a member of the Schmutz Forum for ten years. Yeah. Yep. And I think. And I think that most of my exposure to RGB was due to um, um, the arcade stuff. And then as far as home console stuff, I probably didn't start applying that to my consoles till I don't know, maybe eight years ago, something like that. Um, that's still, like, in the scheme of things, that's pretty, uh, that's, like, ahead of, ahead of the curve by quite a bit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess as far as, I mean, granted, this was all like you know before YouTube was a big deal and stuff like that. So right. really, the way that you got into it, at least in my experience, was through message forums. You yep. know, that's where you share all this information. And and so, especially with the Shmups forum, there's just some guys that are just technical gurus. You know, they just know so much. And so, then you start sharing that information, and people start looking around for PVMs on you know Craigslist and whatnot. And and um, yeah, if you know where to look, I mean, it's not hard to do RGB. We always say that, you know, because when we started making the videos on it, there was information out there, but it was very like a wall of text. Mm. So we, when we were kind of getting into it, we decided to make the videos that we wish existed when we first started. Yeah, that was how I felt when I watched... Um... I think there's still a few remaining RGB videos that I haven't seen of yours, but I just set up like the playlist and was like doing some stuff around the house. And that's, that's basically was my exact thought was this is, this is what happens when you call the internet for lots of good RGB information and make a nice video that's easy to follow. So yeah, <laughs> I think you guys, you guys did a bang up job because like you said, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of information that's out there, but it's, it's in a, um, just to not the most desirable format, you know, whether it I mean, be a, a lot of it's texture. just, yeah, a lot of it's just scouring forums even, yeah. you know? And even, and, yeah. And even then sometimes you're not totally sure if like whoever's talking knows what they're talking about, you know? Right. So there's people like, oh, this cable must have the capacitors. Oh no, that's not true. All you need is a resistor. And it's like, well, who, who knows what's going on? So you got to kind of <laughs> like 
kind of take a general consensus of what you know the people who seem to know what they're talking about are doing. Yeah, I mean, we and we've made you know some small mistakes here and there, but yeah. you know we we had annotations. Yeah, when, uh, you got to keep it honest, happens. you know. But um, but yeah, I mean it's. You know, we we always talked about like we we felt like we broke through to a new level when we were you know researching this stuff. You know, just like this doesn't make any sense, and then something just clicks, and we feel like we're like we felt like we were, you know, one step closer. And honestly, when <laughs> when when I when I want to learn more about a certain RGB related topic, um. You know, you make uh, a, a I, video out of it. I, right? I, I want to make an episode on it because that's that's how I've like started to learn it myself. Like when I when I start off, you know, when we start off making an episode, we might think like, okay, we've like figured out like most everything we already need to know about this topic to do the episode, and then once we start writing things and double checking things and asking some people like what are some things we need to cover we've realized that like we only knew about half of what we needed yeah. to know mm -hmm. you know uh, so it's you know the the whole episode creation process is is such a learning experience for for us too yeah yeah that's great and then um it's nice that as you're getting into it um a lot of those custom cables are are pretty readily available and with good information on compatibility, you know, cause, right. um, back, you know, back when I was starting to get into it, you could come across people that would have, um, you know, a SCART cable or different custom RGB cables, but you weren't sure, you know, how they'd wired up the sink or, you know, different things like that. And it seems like you guys covered that kind of stuff really well. Um, cause yeah, for somebody coming into it fresh, man, there's, there's, yeah, there's a lot to know, so you guys did a good job. Thanks. This, I'm like getting... I've never really played this far in this game before. That's the thing <laughs> about multi-cards, and the same thing happens with, like, flash cards and stuff, too. Yep. When you have everything available to you... It loses once, its value, kind of. <laughs> yeah, and you just... Uh, you play it for a few minutes, and then it's like, all right, something else. I think that's one of the yeah. reasons we always kind of talk about that in the way that we don't get super into emulation because once you have like everything in front of you, <laughs> you tend to it devalues it. Yeah, you don't right. you don't spend the time with it that you would right. normally. I mean, we don't have anything thing against emulation, but I think that once like I like I'd rather pay money for something than I know that I'm going to spend time with it. Sure. I I basically use emulation to um, to suss out whether I'm willing to buy something. Mm -hmm. um, like, because there's a lot of arcade games where you'll just see a single screenshot and you're like, man, this looks great. You know, all this right. good shading and it's made Especially by a for company something like that, that price. Then it's like that makes total sense for yeah. something and, when you're paying and, and hundreds and of dollars then, for uh, something. Yeah, like if all you have to go off is a screenshot and maybe like one or two people on the internet saying this is a great game, I've been disappointed before. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it's worth a, it's worth checking out. What are some ones that you've like regretted? Um, there was this one, uh, Shogun Warriors. Have you played it's, that before? It's, the like, name sounds familiar, but I, I, I like, don't know if I it have. It was a. Um, it sounds like it'd be a cool, like, ninja game, but it's not. It's this crappy, like, basically Street Fighter 2 knockoff. I think it was Konami, which, you know, it's like... I mean, not that everything Konami makes is great, but I kind of have a, a general... Tends to be good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Tim did to be good, at least. Yeah, it was just not good. It was, it was pretty bad. Um, so that was a real dog. Um, and then... Um, God, what was another one? Um... That's probably the worst. Um, that's another <laughs> one. Man, I'm having a hard time remembering. I've, I've gotten rid of so much stuff. Um, yeah, that was definitely the worst, but I... Yeah. There's, this, this game um, does look pretty interesting, though. This one that we're pl I'm playing right now? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I always thought that... Yeah. Like, I, I think that Sengoku 2 is the one that I, you always hear 
heard people talk about. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a big brawler guy, so I, I don't really know what all is out there. But I, I, I like the concept of a, a weapons-based brawler. Like, you know, every, everyone's got their weapon. You know, it seems like most brawlers tend to be more, Just um, you know, punch-kick based. Mm. Um, I, I feel like that's one of the reasons that, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fighting game person either. But I like Soul Calibur, and I feel like something something about everyone having like a weapon, like a, a dedicated weapon, like somehow makes the characters click a little bit more with me than just punch, kick, etc. Um, this this never really. Yeah, there's a there's a pretty good me. there's a pretty good beat 'em up on um, CPS two called um, Armored Warriors. Um, hmm. And it's also called Powered Gear, um, and that is a it's a robot beat 'em up, like a scrolling one like this. Um, but as you go through, uh, now you have built-in weapons and stuff, but you can basically upgrade your mech as you're going through. So you pick up like different arms or different cannons or different you know laser swords or whatever. So as you go through the game, you're not necessarily evolving, but you can kind of modify your mech as you go. Right. And that's a that's a pretty fun feature and. It's made by the guys who did. Uh, it's by the team who did ABP, that the Alien vs. Predator. Oh right, right. So, I've only I so, never played Aliens vs. Predator, the arcade game. I mean, I played Aliens, yeah. the arcade game, but never. Dude, that's definitely that's definitely one of the best beat 'em ups like in the arcade ever. It's it's solid. So and it and it's cool because um, not only is it like a well designed game just as far as like graphics and feel, but um. You can actually do like special moves with the controller, like kind of like Street Fighter type stuff as you're mm -hmm. playing. So there's kind of more depth of fighting than just you know mash buttons. That's cool, and that's that one's pretty pricey these days, I think. Too. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's going for now. I want to say like 200 plus, but um, there's a. Are you guys familiar with um, the CPS2 multi cart that came out? Like I yeah. guess last year. That's what, you know, it's, what is his name? Like, I want to say it's like Shadows. Darksoft. Darksoft, that's it. And you need, you need a, like, a donor board, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you basically um, just remove the ROM, the ROM chips out of uh, some other CPS2 game. And you got to, got to change some jumpers and um, possibly one chip. But I know that makes it sound like pretty yeah, I, that's... terrible. That's Best something bit. I would love to love to get, but I mean, yeah, I think the I think the multi multi cart kit or whatever, I I can't remember. I want to say it's like three hundred or something, but I mean, if those are games that you enjoy, um, you know, after you've gone through, uh, you know, finding a donor cart, which is probably the worst of it, um, uh, after you get it all set up, um, you know, I guess just consider it maybe like a four hundred dollar setup. Right. It's, but then uh, you have everything, and they're all running yeah. accurately because it's like real hardware. Yep. Yeah, it's all 100%, and um, yeah, it's it's a great collection. So, and then it's got the, I don't know if you played any of them, but um, it's got two different D&D um, &D beat -em ups on there. Those oh, are great. The, the Mistara. And yeah, there's Tower of Doom and Tower. Shadow of Mistara, and both of those are super solid. And if you got your super gun set up appropriately, you can play um, three or four players on those. Uh, I mean, I can't do four players. I mean, I just have Ninja Turtles, and that's... Uh... Well, the, um, the uh, what you call it, um, on CPS2, the, the three and four player connections, uh, don't quote me on this, but I, I think those might just go off the auxiliary connector that's on the A board. Um, so you might be able to rig it up even if you're... Super Gun isn't set up for four player. I think you might be able to just hook up the extra players on that auxiliary connector, but I don't know. Possibility. I'm gonna play Shock Troopers too. A lot of people. It's not nearly as good as the first one. But... <laughs> After that, play. Um, oh, the the, 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 the Gan Ryu. Earlier. I'm gonna play that first, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to see that. That looked uh, pretty interesting. That's the but one where there was at I... least one person asking what it was. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll play it. That was uh, that's like one that I mentioned in the I show in the episode when I mentioned about being able to customize your controls with the Dual Shock Three because I put like the uh, the grappling hook arm on the shoulder button and it worked really good. 
Um, I don't think I've ever played this before. Yeah, it's 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 cool. I've not I've never gotten very far in it. But uh kind of blows my mind how many Neo Geo games there really are anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially I mean, especially as someone who I mean, I never knew anyone with a Neo Geo growing up, you know? It was it was very off my radar. I mean, I was aware of the system, but um, I don't think I knew at the time what it was. Um, like, I mean, in terms of, you know, it being this arcade thing, basically. Well, and you said you didn't... You didn't only read, like, Nintendo Power. You didn't read, like, EGM or anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I did a little bit, but it was it was the only one I was subscribed to. I mean, you know, I, I, I grew up Nintendo only until the late 90s, so... You know, I didn't, didn't really... Didn't really branch out much. <laughs> this one's pretty different. Your... Oh, what's that? Oh, you were saying that, um... That Neo Geo systems were for rent? Yeah, there was a place called Movie World. They had, like, one system for rent. How much did they charge for that? I, you know, I don't remember the exact price, but I know that it was... I could never talk my mom into spending that kind of money. <laughs> like, I think they there made was... you put, like, a deposit down, too. Okay. There was a there was a place, um, like, I don't know, maybe, like, five miles from where I grew up that, that was renting those at the time. And I want to say it was, like, Something obscene, like twenty dollars just for the console or something, for like one night, and then each <laughs> each game was maybe like seven dollars or something. So I mean, if you want to get you know like a few games to try out, you know you're looking at like thirty, forty bucks for a night, just like oh, yeah. I mean the <laughs> they had to make their money back. Yeah, I, I feel like the whole idea of renting a Neo Geo is is, is a flawed premise because the whole point of a Neo Geo is to own arcade games at home. Yeah, so you might as well just go play in the arcade, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good that's a good point. That's a really good point. Uh, yeah, the premise would be that it would be cheaper to. Uh, to to beat to beat games at home by renting it than playing in the arcade, but with that much money, I would hope that I could beat it in the arcade for much cheaper. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not Magician Lord. I don't know if he could beat that with the credit feeding. <laughs> That's a, that was always like the notorious one for being so hard. Yeah, I've seen some one credit clears of that, and I'm just like, dude, it's dedication. <laughs> That's like the only game that they probably have ever played. <laughs> yeah dedication yeah i actually picked up um i like i said i i had rented um a neo geo with a friend when i was younger um and i played a little bit of those games in in the local arcade they always had fighters in them i don't think i ever played a metal slug i, I don't think they ever owned a metal slug at that arcade so i never really got to get a feel for anything other than the fighting games there um but uh Many years later, um, this is probably 90, 98 or 99, um, I went to a, a local police and surplus auction, and it was just like piles of stuff that had either been like confiscated or just like leftovers from <laughs> I don't know what. And so some of it was just a bunch of crap, some of it was cool. Um, but there's this pallet of like old radio gear and stuff like CB equipment, and on top of it, was a Neo Geo AES with um, both joysticks and like Samurai Showdown 2 and uh, the cables and stuff all kind of like taped into this ball. And and so, you know, I didn't want to buy this whole pallet because I don't know what am I going to do with all that radio gear, but I was like, dude, I want that Neo Geo. And so, <laughs> um, and so I bid, I don't know, something like, you know, 20, 30 bucks or something. And, you know, I, I didn't get it. And so the guy who won it, like not to stereotype, but he didn't look like a Neo Geo player. <laughs> and, um, he just kind of looked like this good old boy who was into CB equipment or something. And and so I go over and I was like, "Hey, I saw you won that." I was like, "I would really like to buy that game system on top." And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, "20 bucks, 20 bucks." And he's like, "Oh, how about 20 bucks?" So I'm like, I'll "Take <laughs> yes." <laughs> so so that was my Neo Geo purchase. And you still have that one? Oh yeah, that's great. Wow. You know, I mean, that's like a story that... I wouldn't have bought one otherwise. Um, <laughs> so, 
and I and I had I think at the time AES games. I mean, if you had like box complete ones, some of them were they were really desirable. Would have been expensive at the time, but a lot of the AES games weren't that expensive. And I picked up a Last Resort AES for like thirty bucks, um, and uh, a few They're other. Like, games. It's like ridiculous now. Like almost everything is ridiculous now. Like yeah, thousands of dollars now. Yeah, it's stupid. And so, um, and so I. Uh, so you know, I played some of the go- those, and they're they're pretty fun. And I ended up selling them just because I I wasn't really playing them. But since then, um, I think I've probably played more of my um, MV- I've got an MVS board that I can plug into my arcade cab. Um, I think I've played more stuff that way, like Metal Slug and Puzzle Bobble and stuff like that. Um, but I'll keep the AES around just because you know there's no reason to get rid of it. It's, it's nice to have around. Right. Uh-oh. So uh, is this game pretty good? I think it's pretty fun. I mean, it, it's it's interesting because it doesn't. It doesn't seem like. It doesn't look like an arcade game, to me. Right. Not just that, but I mean, it doesn't. It's very different than a lot of the games on the system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a creepy character. Like, the character sprites are, like, a lot smaller than you would expect from an arcade game of that yeah, era. definitely. Like, uh, you know, that that was, like, always one of the things they wanted to show off how big their characters <laughs> were. And all the um, and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, this, I mean, this, this COD just looks like something that I would expect to play on the Super Nintendo, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's it's very different. Uh, very console-looking sort of game. Yeah, it like, really I, is. I don't mean graphics, but I just mean... I mean, partly in graphics, but, uh, you know, mostly in just... It does not strike me as an arcade-type game. Yep. Which I, guess I, think, I think it's cool. <laughs> I guess the same could be said for Osman. You know, we were talking about that earlier. Mm. That I mean, his sprite is really small. Yeah, um, but it's very well animated. I always oh, love yeah, the... Uh, yeah. The thing I like about Strider is I would, and they kind of do the same thing on that. Is I love the, the jumping animation, the kind of mid-air cartwheel. Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of stuff in that in Osman that, that they, I don't think it was like this, obviously the same people, but you know Strider Two kind of felt very similar. Yes. Yeah, what was what was your thoughts on Strider Two? Like I, I really liked it, but I I. Just played the uh, PlayStation One version, uh huh. And you know, like, it's it's really easy because it just gives you unlimited continues right at the start. And you know, if you, unless you have restraint, <laughs> you're just yeah. gonna, you're gonna be able to beat it no matter what. And it's like yeah. it's unlimited continues, and you start like right, you know, and for, right from where you died. Right. Yeah. I I don't know that I ever tried to. To do a proper one credit clear yourself. <laughs> yeah, stuff. me either. Um, it seemed, you know, it seems kind of silly to say, but it seemed easy, but then again, I was credit feeding, so. Um, but it didn't seem like I had to feed that many credits, so. But it's it, it was it's a decent game. You know, it's, it's, yeah, I, it's really I good thought, music. Yeah, I mean, as a Strider fan, I enjoyed playing another Strider game. Um, but, yeah, I think the, I think the difficulty could have been ramped up a bit and um other than that I, I don't really have that big of complaints with it i thought it was a a valid sequel yeah i, I and i really like the uh, character redesign mm. you know just like i because you know where he looks more like a ninja yeah i can't remember is is that the same sprite as uh they used in the Marvel vs. Capcom games. Yeah, it's the same look, but it's. it's it? uh, I don't. I don't think it's the same. The actual same sprite, because even in that, he is pretty pixelated when you get in real close. Yeah, if you get up close. But yeah, that man. That's one of the my favorite. I mean, I enjoy the gameplay, but that was one of my favorite things about the Marvel vs. Capcom games was seeing um, updates to the graphics for old yeah. Capcom characters. Really cool. And it was, you know, you know, even, you know, like, I always think of Captain Commando, even though that was not, like, a game that I played beyond a couple of times in the arcade. Mm-hmm. I always, 
and Captain Commando, you always thought of him as like the Capcom mascot from like the NES yep. days. Yeah. When he wasn't even like he was just in the in the instruction manuals. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Jeez, I'm just the, yeah, the weapons they... in this are not very very handy. This weapon I have is just kind of silly. Huh. I think I might still have a Captain Commando board. I can't remember. Um, but that was I, that was CPS two, I think. I'm pretty CPS one. Oh, was it? it? Was C- yeah. It, then it was like it had to be like the very tail end. I mean, there was um, a. I, I don't know. CPS one was pretty. Uh, that was a pretty solid system. I mean, I, like really, the CPS two isn't that much more. Um, Capable. I mean, audio was a huge improvement on CPS2, but really, CPS1 isn't that much different from CPS2, so CPS1 could pull off some pretty serious stuff. Um, I I would love to have a CPS1 multi-cart um, just, as, just as much or possibly even more than a CPS2 multi-cart. Really? Yeah, there's some amazing games on there. Like, Willow was fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which like, I've never played. I've, just, I've always seen... Like I've seen a lot oh, of yeah. screenshots and stuff of it. Um, it was, uh, wasn't that too many games last year? I think so. It may have been. Yeah, Captain Commando was great. Um, Final Fights on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a few shooters um, like uh, um, 1941, uh, Varth. Um, there was a. Kind of a quirky um, three-in-one called uh, Three Wonders. Oh, you, you know, had... I played that on the uh, Capcom Classics Collection. Okay. okay. And uh, it, that's like the that, and you know what the other one I really liked was is I think it's it's CBS one is the uh, Eco Fighters. Okay, Echo that's Fighters CBS two. Or yeah, oh, that, oh, that is CBS two. With that with that arm that spins around yeah. when you shoot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty cool game. Yeah, good soundtrack. I remember on that one. I guess that's not what yep. I was supposed to do there. <laughs> I just what was up. um, what was the game in the video that um, it was a it was a space shooter and you were like flying down this corridor and like the the background looked like super smooth pre-rendered motion or at least I assume it had to have been pre-rendered because it looked too good. Huh? On which system? Uh, it was Neo Geo. Oh, oh! It's probably like Pole Star or Blazing Star. Yeah, Blazing um, Stars. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll play that. Yeah. It was like it was like the same thing, just repeating again and again and again. But it looked really cool. Yes, it's, it's like a really, a lo- like really cool like parallax. I'll play that mm-hmm. after this. Yeah, Pole Star and Blazing Star have some pretty cool pre-rendered stuff. Because I, I don't know, I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth about pre-rendered stuff for a long time just because I had seen so many bad examples of it. But I think those games pull it off pretty well. Yeah, I mean, there's the, the prehistoric aisle that's on this. It's pretty cool, but I mean, I think that a lot of people kind of just went for that because, you know, Donkey Kong Country came out and... It was a, uh, like a lot of people thought it looked a lot better. Hmm. Yeah, Donkey Kong Country really <laughs> changed people's view, I bet, you know, on uh, pre-rendered stuff. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play Blazing Star because it's a really good game. I mean, I still like pre-rendered stuff a whole lot. Like, I, I know a lot of people think it's aged badly, and, and some of it has. But I, I think what's cool about um, uh, uh, well, what I think is is cool is that back then pre-rendered was like hard. You know, like you had to have like good technology to. Um, to, to to create that and you know stuff like Donkey Kong Country and um, Riven and um, uh, Resident Evil Final Fantasy you know all the, all those kinds of games they were they were using pre-rendered graphics to push what was 
possible. And nowadays, if it's pre-rendered, you know, it's usually, you know, uh, you know like a small indie game or something. And it's, does, it's done because it's easy. It's done because it's simple. Um, whereas I, I feel like some of Try, the this older is the level stuff you're talking about. Wait till you see this. Uh, has, has sweet. held up well because of that, because because of the effort that went into it. Yeah, I agree. But think, uh, uh, you think I was going to say one thing? One thing I was kind of shocked at was to find out, um, like in reading um, developers' notes and interviews and stuff on certain games. There were games that had pre-rendered stuff that I didn't even realize was pre-rendered. Like, um, mm. I'm a big cave fan, and um, uh, there's this website um, called um, Gaumen Guy, and uh, um, the guy did like a ton of um, old cave interviews um, translated in English. And I remember being blown away because in the interview on uh, Esprit, did you guys ever play Esprit? Um, no, I know the name though. It's a top-down shooter, but it's character-based rather than ships. So you're like people flying around with psychic oh, powers okay. and stuff. And um, they is that said the one that, that was released here? No, that I was gonna. I say don't think that... there's been any home any home releases for that. Um, the uh, closest they got to it was there was a um, a home port for uh, Esp Galuda. Yeah, yeah. And they they had a mode where you could use Esprit characters in it. Okay. Because um, I've been thinking about. But, there's like a complete version of that or something like of a Esp, Esp, Esp Galuda on a, on the 360. There was a, yeah. Something. Yeah. Cave released a lot of stuff, but anyways, yeah. On, on Esprit, they actually had pre-rendered stuff. And I remember reading that in the interview, they're like, yeah, blah, 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 rendering the characters in 3d. And I was like, what? Cause I thought it was all hand drawn 2d stuff. <laughs> um, but a lot of their I stuff guess... looks like it's pre-rendered. Yeah, now when they get into Galuda and stuff like that later on, some of it is just blatant. Um, and uh, Doranpachi, uh, Dio Joe, there, yeah, there's some stuff that I, I really don't like the look of it because it's gross pre rendering. <laughs> um, but uh, as far as like the stuff that's either undetectable pre rendered or hand drawn, to, I'm, I'm a big cave fan from that. And not to say that their other stuff is crap, it's just, you know, it's just different. Uh, I'm disappointed that that fancy background went away. I, yeah, I, the... I can't. I just can't entirely wrap my head around like how that loops. Like it just looks so cool. Yeah, there's so many like levels to it. A lucky panel appears. Yeah, the the, <laughs> the translation in this or whatever, like <laughs> is really kind of funny. I think it adds a lot of charm to some of those. Are games. you serious? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely has a lot. Of... Get it more. <laughs> <laughs> this game is one that really benefited from the rapid fire on the um, the PlayStation to Neo Geo ah. controller adapter. Because mm. yeah, save your fingers. Yeah, not just that, but you you know you um, get a stronger shot the like the faster you press it. Oh, and if you, okay. and if you can just hold it down. And you can just mm. tear people up. Yeah. It's yeah, interesting. See this right here. This looks pretty good. Like the pre-rendering on this. Right. Yeah. It's, well, I, I'm I'm pretty into the look of this game. I'm not doing very good though. You beat it. Your skill <laughs> is great. <laughs> Oh, this is the Hey Poor Player. I didn't realize that came from this game. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah, Hey Poor Player. That's funny. Isn't that the name of a website or something? Or a I'm podcast? Sure it is. A yeah, podcast. it's going to become a meme. Yeah. Real, I didn't realize it was from this. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you beat it. Your skill is great. I love it. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I like this game. <laughs> well, maybe we'll, if you ever hear, then we'll, yeah, we can co-op this one, too. Trying to think of some other good uh, English uh, things that become <laughs> memes. Um, obviously, the zero wing stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. Meme. I mean, yeah, zero uh, wing. I always think of uh, Shine Get. Was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Shine Get. That's classic. Too too bad it didn't uh, actually. Yeah, that was a 
Mario Super Sunshine. Mario Sunshine when uh, oh, okay. the Japanese version says when you get uh, a shine, which are your uh-huh. you know MacGuffins in the game. Uh, in the U.S. version, it says shine, but the Japanese version says shine get. Okay. And, and people really hoped that they would keep it for the U.S. version, but sadly not. Uh, I, yeah. I do enjoy a good bad tra- a good bad translation. Sure. Yeah, I think get has has a. I think that that's, that's a Japanese really prolific thing. It, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not really sure There's why a... that word is is such a big deal in Japan. Like I, I don't know. Uh, if if their get equivalent just you know fits into a, a sentence more easily than our get does, <laughs> maybe yeah, uh, I don't know. Like I I, I want to say um, in in the gold saucer in Final Fantasy VII, I want to say there's there's a there's a there's a electronic sign that has a a, a phrase spinning around it. I think it just says get. It doesn't say anything <laughs> else. It just says get. Get it. <laughs> Just get some stuff. <laughs> I think one. I think one of the strangest translations I saw um, was there was this arcade game called um, Edward Randy. Did you guys ever see no. that before? <laughs> it sounds was, uh, great. It was made by Data East, and it's some of, like, I mean, some of the um, levels don't have awesome graphics, but some, like, the good stuff in that game is ridiculous. Like, you're just like, how have I never heard of this game? when you look at some of it, but um, it doesn't play well um, in regards to the, it has like um, some whip mechanics to it, and the whole time I was playing it, I really wished that it was Castlevania 4 because the whip mechanics are so good in that game <laughs> and, um, but anyways like, if yeah, if they just combine those two it would be a pretty amazing game, but anyways um, there's these situations where I can't remember if you're low on health or what, but it would say pinch, P-I-N-C-H like and obviously that's some warning that like oh crap you're yeah. gonna die or something. You're it's a pinch. It... <laughs> What's it called? Edward R- Edward Randy. Edward Randy. That's like such a <laughs> strange name. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was like an Indiana Jones type of theme. Oh you know? okay. Yeah you yeah. Got your whip and your hat and. That's, that sounds like a that sounds like a rejected name for a. Um, it's like Ernest Evans. Game. I always think of on the Genesis. For a what game? For a remedy game, uh, yeah. remedy that makes like Alan Wake and <laughs> oh, okay. stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Um, what's interesting though is um, a buddy of mine. He he had a bunch of Japanese Saturn games, and I can't remember what game he had, but it had a little insert inside, and it, it had a promotion for Edward Randy coming to Sega Saturn, which never happened, obviously. But mm. I just thought that was interesting that they went to the point of actually putting in little inserts into games and they're like, Oh, yeah. I guess not to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love, like, I, I feel oddly attached to those, just the random little inserts. You know, I, I used to throw away a, a lot of stuff that wasn't, um, the instruction manual. But now right. if I like get my hands on that, I'm like, I, I can't get rid of this. Cause it's like, <laughs> You know, like a, a, a unique little window into what was going on at the what time. What they were trying to sell at the time and how they did yep. it and how they approached it. You know, I just went through uh, um, a, a bag of random stuff uh, that I got from my uncle of old PC game stuff. Um, and and we put it as, uh, up as a little fun little video for our Patreon subscribers. Mm-hmm. But... Um, they're, they're just all these random papers and like advertising some games and stuff, and it was it was just it's just so interesting to look at. Like I mean, even something so stupid as like the um, you know Club Nintendo was you know went away, and as I was entering my last Club Nintendo codes, I was like, I always throw them away when I was done with them, mm. like after I redeemed the code. I was right. like, I, I can't throw these away because they're, <laughs> they're the last ones, <laughs> you know? It's, it's like, that, like I, it, it looks stupid now, and I don't care now. Like, I, I'm, I look at this, I'm like, this is completely uninteresting. But, like, what if I, I open up that box in 20 years? I'm like, wow, <laughs> look at this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. This is, like, very bullet hell-esque right here. What's going on here? Yeah, I was kind of impressed with the number of uh, on-screen bullets there. So I take it you're like if you're a big cave fan, you're a big bullet hell fan, 
And you like Mars Matrix yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, not, that's not to say that I'm good at those by any means, <laughs> yeah. but I really do enjoy them. Yeah, me too. I I punished myself thoroughly for many years on a uh, Dodon Pachi. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't have the board anymore, but oh man, if I if I could have if I could only have three arcade boards, like to my to my name, mm-hmm. it would be Dodon Pachi. Um, some puzzle game, probably like Puzzle Bobble or something like that, and um, probably Super Street Fighter Two Turbo. Like that would be it. Like I would be totally content with those three games. <laughs> Um, yeah, Super yeah, Street Fighter okay. 2 Turbo is, like, one that I really, really want. Mm. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunately, just like, it's one up in value. Well, hopefully, um, like, once this, you know, like, since the suicide battery thing is, gonna, like, will revive a ton of boards, hopefully. So, hopefully, yeah, the market I don't, will get flooded with a bunch. Yeah, I don't... I don't have my hopes up that it will improve the market. I mean, that would be great if it did, but um, unfortunately, um, the batteries that die in the boards—like, I'm sure there's some op, op, uh, can't even talk, some arcade operators that um, have stacks and stacks of dead CPS2 games. Mm-hmm. But the thing, but the thing is, is it's not enough just to have a fix to recover them. You have to um, also have guaranteed that the battery didn't destroy the board because those batteries, after they die, it doesn't just keep the game from running, but after a number of years, the battery starts to degrade and the acid leaks out, and Mm -hmm. it will actually damage the board to the extent where it's unrepairable. Like, it'll kill... Like, there's a number of custom chips close by, and, like, once those have their their legs eaten off and stuff, like, there's no fixing that board. Right. And so... um, you have to hope that you find some dead boards that aren't uh, um, in dire need of repair, too. So I don't know. I mean, it'd be nice if it helped the if it helped the scene become more affordable. But I think just gaming in general, classic gaming in general, has kind of blown it's up. It's just going to continue to get more and more difficult to get into, I guess. Yeah, but being being as I am. Uh, as I've got my ear to the ground on all things CPS2, if you're ever looking for a particular game, just let me know and I'll do what I can and get you a good deal. Someone uh, just asked you a bit ago if you could only have three CPS2, what would those be? Oh, sorry, I haven't been fully paying attention. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's fine. I'm, I'm supposed to be paying um, attention more than I am. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, obviously it's Super Shoot Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, uh, Alien vs. Predator, I think, represents the best beat 'em up on the system. And um, man, for for other for other games, the Pro Gear is a great game. Uh, the shooter, the side-scrolling cave That's shooter. That's never been ported either, right? I don't believe that it has. That's, um, that one's pretty expensive too. Yeah, so. it is. It's up there. Um, I would be torn on the third one. Um, I would lean towards Pro Gear because it's a it's a really cool cave game, but I can't help but think I might actually get more enjoyment out of another fighting game. <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as being able to play with friends and, you know, just all around enjoyment. Um, yeah, that's a hard one. Top three CPS2. You know, as much as I'm a huge Rockman fan, I don't know if you guys checked out my... Uh, I sent Corey a link to my YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys checked out my, my Rockman collection. I have a pretty mm. extensive Rockman collection. So as big of a fan as I am of Rockman, I'm not a fan of the CPS2 games. Like they're, mm. they're I've only played those on the neat. anniversary collection that they were. Yeah, yeah. It's, neat to, it's neat to experience and be like, oh, that was cool. They made that kind of a game for Rockman. And they had cool remixes of have... the music. That was like okay. the coolest thing about it, I thought. Yeah, but I just I don't see myself um, replaying those very much, you know. So uh, I definitely have to go for something different than that. So. That's cool. So you're you have a particular favorite uh, Mega Man game, Rock Man game. Um, you know I hate to I hate to have the uh, the most common answer, but I really do enjoy two. Yeah. 
but but the thing <laughs> is, like, I just say that because Try has a lot to say about Mega Man Two. I I I recently decided I I, I think Mega Man Two is my least favorite NES one, okay. <laughs> which is totally fine. And and you know what? To, to be honest, that's probably the one that I've spent the most time with. So it's entirely possible that if I gave as much time on the others as I have on two, I yeah. might find one of the others is way more enjoyable for me. Right. Um, that's I, just kind of yeah, I mean, gonna I've, shook out. I, I've played all of them, like, you know, probably between three and four times each. But, like, I haven't played two or any particular one enough for it to, like, really have sunk in, like, all the all the particulars and the flow of the game and who's weak to what, etc. Sure. There's like a few parts of two that just really annoy me. I'm like, why the did they do that? The crash bomb thing. And yeah, the crash bomb. That's the only the really annoying part, boss. I think, of the game. That, oh. that That's definitely the worst part of the game, but there, there's a few other things that annoy me. Um, but, but yeah, that's... <sighs> Like I, I, I just think the other Mega Man games on, on NES are just like a little more. It, they're they're more accessible to have a quick romp with if you want, you know. Okay. Like three is pretty hard. Uh, like and three drags because See, it has like, like three. The, three is where I, 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 kinda I, fell I off. love three. Like the like three has the, my favorite soundtrack by far. Like I like I know the quite the, the the debate is always between two and three, and I think people just say two because they like two better. For some reason that I don't well, understand, a but uh, <laughs> I think that people but, say too because it's better. <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, but I'm three, I'm three, favorable to three one. Three easily has a better else. soundtrack than two. That, that's I, I I believe pretty indisputable. But. Did you find Did you find one entirely frustrating? Well, I wouldn't say entirely, but a lot of frustrating moments. I, 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 it absolutely does, but it's also like kind of quicker for me to get through. So I, the pain is more short lived. Okay. See, I love <laughs> so the, the first the one. The first one is, is not easily my favorite. But yeah, one, one definitely has a lot of like really annoying moments. Um, I didn't, I didn't like one that much the first time I beat it, but every time I've replayed it since, like I kind of had a good time. So I, I don't know. Mm. And. So that's for NES. Did you have um, any preference on the X series? Did you have any favorites there? Um, I, it, you know, pro, I mean, one is is probably the best. Um, I, I I hold one and two, one and X one, X two, in relatively equal esteem. Um, though I'll, I'll acknowledge that X one is probably better. Um, a, after that, I'm not really a big fan. Um. Uh, X3 was kind of hyped up because hyped up in my mind anyway because of how expensive it was and okay. um, I finally played the play it on the X collection and uh, I was kind of disappointed like it just I, there were a lot of things about that just weren't that fun to me mm. uh, like like for example you can't even ride the mech things until much later Mm. Um, and, and, you know, some of the the boss designs didn't seem all that cool to me. There, there were just a few things that, that I didn't like as much in X3, though I would like to get a Super Famicom cart of it because that, that's not that expensive. So I, yeah, I, I didn't want to get that. It's still fairly expensive. Um, X4, <laughs> like I thought was like one of the easiest games I'd ever played, which was just like, there's nothing wrong with an easy game, but it's just like not what I'm expecting out of a Mega Man game. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely was easy, but I did enjoy <clears throat> it's got a great seeing, seeing what extra stuff they could do on the PlayStation versus right. the Super Nintendo. Like yeah. They totally redrawn like, characters I, I like and the, everything. I like the, the sprites more on the Super Nintendo. Like, I feel like they just have more character. Okay. Um, but um, they, I, I would not mind. Like I, I don't own the X collection anymore, but that was where I played it. But I, I would not mind owning like the PlayStation version of X4. But like X5 and X6, now, I've owned PlayStation copies of those in the past, and I, I hate those games. <laughs> <laughs> I beat, yeah. I, I beat them all. I've beaten X1 through X6, and I like. The first time I played X5, I kind of liked it. Mm -hmm. 
I got near the end and just never finished it for some reason. And then when I uh, played through it on the X Collection, I was like, wow, I don't like this game. Mm. Uh, because, like, I, I had later played X6 and, like, just saw how much I hate it. I played through the whole thing, but I <laughs> hate X6 <laughs> so much. Um, I have not played X7, uh, and I haven't played X8 more than just to test it, but I did get a copy of X8. Um, uh, a while back, I, 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 the reason being, I've, I've heard X8 is actually pretty good. Mm. Um, I, I've heard a few differing opinions on that, but I, I've, I've, I don't know if it's just in reaction to how X7 is supposedly even worse than X6. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. Um, I think this but, game has uh, unlimited continues, which is surprising for a MVS version. Usually it's limited, but it seems to be unlimited here. Mm. But yeah, yeah I, I was blown away. Um, did you play on Super Famicom the um, Rockman and Forte game? Uh, I, I I played a bit of the GBA version, and and I yeah. I, I never finished it. I, I didn't like it that much, but I, I feel like I would like it more revisiting it now. So I I do want to get a Super Famicom copy of that. Yeah, I it's think, um, I think it'd be fun to go through. Yeah, as far as playing playing the games in order um, I never did and so my experience was kind of um, all over the place and so I had played uh, Mega Man 8 on PS1 before I had played Rockman right. Forte on Super Famicom and right. I was blown away that the sprites that and everything were Rockman, from from that? Yeah, that Rockman and Forte was like yeah. just, you know, I, w- I would looked say like Mega like, Man 8. It looked, it yeah. looked just as good yeah, it looked just yeah. as good as 8 on the Super Nintendo and I was just like, man, this is Good stuff. I, I, was, so, I was a little disappointed seeing that personally uh, when I played the GBA version because I don't, I don't like Mega Man's pose in X8 for some for some reason that bugs me. Because okay. um, I like I, I like I like Mega Man's like I'm not like a huge huge fan of Mega Man Seven, but I really really like the sprites in that game. Mm. Like I know they don't have as many frames of animation. Whoa. I know there's not as many. Try you're gonna like this screen. level here. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, I don't know something. I like. I just I really like the style of Mega Man Seven and Mega Man Eight. To me, felt like like a step back, even though it, it's it's more technically accomplished. But okay. whoa, what is this? This looks <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Like, why are you flying sideways? I don't <laughs> yeah, know, but I, know. I like it. Right, right. Uh. Yeah, Mega Man 7, I, I, I don't know. Like, it, um, that, that was actually, oddly enough, my, 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 I know it sounds crazy, but that was my first exposure to Mega Man. <laughs> okay. Was, which, um, was, which was, 7? Yeah. That's crazy. Um, like, I just, I never, like, I didn't subscribe to any magazines until, like, 97, and like none of my friends were into Mega Man, so I just I never I never had any idea what Mega Man was until um, uh, I, I I met some friends who um, they 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 liked renting Mega Man Seven and Mega Man X, and uh, that's crazy. I can't even and, believe and, like I rented Mega Man One and the first Legend of Zelda at the same time, and I mm. didn't touch Zelda the entire time. <laughs> That's yeah, it, um, it, it, you know, my, you know, I, I, I had a few friends that had, had, uh, Nintendo games, you know, my, my cousin had Nintendo games, but my, my world, What's my that? view into that. How, how huge that is. Um, <laughs> uh, my, my, um, my, my Man, window into that, that is. Was, I mean, I have to say that. Uh, was was pretty small. <laughs> What's that? How huge that? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty I good. I love this game. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I think the AES version is like a thousand. It's like seven thousand dollars or something. Oh my god! What? And I heard no. somebody like I feel like it was. I heard someone say they paid like four. Had, like, it's like thousands of dollars or something. <laughs> I think I think the first I think the first auction I ever saw on eBay for a Neo Geo game that just blew my mind was a Metal Slug, and that was for like 
twenty five hundred bucks or something, which was unprecedented at the time as far as like retro gaming goes. And then you know the the years to come after that blew that out of the water. You know you've got like <laughs> stadium events for twenty three grand and stuff like that. Right. So it was like, but yeah, a strange era. Try. Will you look it up? Will you look up Blazing Star uh, Neo Geo AES on eBay and look at the completed auctions? Yeah. I feel like I saw somebody on NeoGAF say that they spent like paid like four thousand dollars for it. Oh. <laughs> I know it's like. I mean, it's it's a good game. Uh, yeah. I guess I just don't make enough money. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, MVS. I, I searched for AES, but that's uh, AES isn't even coming up right now. MVS is like two fifty. Oh, that's not too bad for that. Yeah, the thing that's crazy though is like even some of the MVS games have become um, uh, quite expensive compared to what right. they used to be. And that was kind of like, and I, I was always kind of um, happy about the the loophole that existed for a while because people were focused on blowing lots of money on AES and the MVS just kind of slipped through. And I was like, sweet, I can pretty much buy whatever I want. Yeah. But now that's not so much the case. Okay, here's a AES conversion. For the, the, I'm I'm going through sold uh, listings now. AES conversion sold for three hundred seventy five. Uh, Blazing Star AES Japan import a hundred percent genuine SNK mint sold for uh, four thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> oh my goodness! From Germany, like most of these are like from Europe. And that's for the Japanese version. Like, isn't isn't it more? Uh, preferable to get one that's not Japanese oh, reach. Uh, let's see. Here's another Japanese one that sold for over five thousand dollars. I just got a weird illegal instructions exception error handling. Please report this error to the Uni by us homepage. Oh no! Whoops! Oh, you you got you got uh, uh, th- th- this was a, a, a multi cart error. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. It must weird. Have, it must have broken something. I definitely broke something. Oh man! Now to play this game properly, you're gonna to have to pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the vid unless I'm playing for score or something, I don't really see the need to. I don't know. What is what that is pick. this? Blazing Star Marquee Neo Geo Arcade Jamma. It sold for thirteen fifty. Like th- thirteen dollars and fifty cents. I oh, think. Okay. I thought. Th- it's just like the the panel or something. Yeah. I know there's... So the original uh, marquees were just like those little uh, trans light squares that you could get that the arcade operator could swap out. And then on a few games, they would have a full marquee. But I got since, right since then, I think a lot of people will just hop on Photoshop and make their own like mock-up full marquee or whatever and sell those on eBay for like 10, 15 bucks, which... I don't know. I guess some people are into that, but it kind of bugs me that people just grab stock art and blow it up and make money off of it. I don't know. Here's a here's a factory sealed AES Sengoku, uh, sold for only two hundred dollars. I really? feel like for factory sealed AES. I mean, I don't know what that game really? goes for otherwise, but factory sealed oh. AES for two hundred dollars. That doesn't sound as ridiculous as I would expect. Wow, I wonder if... Um, Not that that's a small amount of money, but still. Yeah, for AES, that sounds like a good deal. Huh. All right, sorry about that. It, it's, it's weird, you know, I, I, I you know, was trying to look up Blazing Star specifically, but I, I, <laughs> it kind of gave up on trying to... So here, here's the MVS that sold for... Uh, in, MVS Blazing Star... Uh, U.S. version. I mean, it's just the cart only, but it it, it sold for one seventy four. Oh, that's huh. not bad. Yeah, here's an here's another with a box. I don't know if it's an official box, but it's only two. It don't sold for only two hundred. Hmm. When what? When was it? May. Wow. It was like less than a month ago. Huh. Here, here's. Shock box, is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah, that's the... Uh, is that an official box? No. No, it's an aftermarket. They're really uh, good, though. Okay. I, get, I get them for... I've got them for mine, at least. They're pretty nice, I think. I, I love how the cartridges look like tapes. They do. 
like VHS style. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure at uh, some thrift stores and um, and pawn shops that. Uh, AES carts have ended up in the VHS section. Mm, yeah, yeah. I was in. Uh, <laughs> I was. I was. Uh, I, I, I went uh, with some friends yesterday, and we we ended up going to <laughs> this like Japanese, uh, like convenience store. <laughs> it was like like owned by Japanese people, and it looked like their general clientele was like like Japanese people it was kind of it's kind of interesting but they had this whole wall of like bootleg DVDs and VHS tapes <laughs> nice I, I had no idea what they were but I was like I kind of want to grab a few of these and just <laughs> randomly and find out what they are that's funny <laughs> um, this is one that's the uh, Strikers 1945 I always think of like ni- like 1945 as like you know, a Capcom series. Well, Sorry. 1943 was, right. the, was the stuff. And then but Capcom even broke away from that. So so the, so for the purist, uh, for Capcom, it went 1943, no, 1942, 1943, 1943 Kai, which was like kind of a variant, 1941, and then um, uh, 1944 was on CPS2, that was called the Loop Master, and then 19XX, which was actually developed by Sikyo, the game that you're playing now. Oh, okay. Um, if I if I'm remembering correctly, no wait, don't quote me on that. Um, 19XX was official Capcom. 1944 was uh, Rising, um, which is another shooter developer. Um, so that was kind of a the Capcom side. On Sikyo's side. It went um, uh, 1945, 1, 2, and 3, and then um, 19... Crap, I can't remember. What was the last one? There's there's one that follows those. Oh, no, I think what it was was uh, 1945 Part 3 had an alternate name that was a different different number. But I enjoy 2 the most out of that Striker series. And that was that's like arcade only, right? Yeah. Um, so this one was kind of a. Um, this one for the MVS was kind of a. Uh, I don't know. I, it's I guess it's technically part of the series, but it's a. Uh, it's not. I think it's almost kind of like an offshoot. Like I don't know that it's based on any one particular one from the others. Um, I mean, this is very much a bullet hell. I guess. Yeah, it is. It is, but it's not a vertical screen like all the others. Right. Um, so kind of even that is kind of a big deal as far as the feel of it. Um, but it, I mean, it's it's legit. I mean, it's it still looks like a decent shooter. The so, bullets in this game look a lot faster than some games to me, anyway. Yeah. I, I'm 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 not super well versed in this uh, this genre, uh, but. I mean, if I had like one oh, more explosion. PDM, I'd set up like I'd set it up in Tate, like the sideways one, sideways. Mm-hmm. But I heard it's not very like good for the monitor. Have it like that for extended periods of time. Well, I don't think that it hurts it as much as um, it can cause like some weird dega or um, I don't know if you call it degaussing or whatever. But like where, or I think it requires degaussing, but. When you put it on the side, all this stuff in there is so heavy, the yoke and all that stuff, right. it's going to kind of, it's going to kind of, I mean, gravity on something that heavy, you know, is, is, is notable. And so things are going to kind of shift or, you know, bend or whatever, you know, even if they're bolted in there well, they're going to, they're going to sag differently because mm-hmm. of the weight. And so that can cause um, some, uh, some strange coloring on some of the edges sometimes, stuff mm-hmm. like that. It doesn't hurt it because if you degauss it, then it looks fine. But um, uh, that's the only problem I'm I'm aware of because those are designed to go either way. Now, wasn't uh, Bob from Retro RGB telling us something about was that Mortal Kombat cabinet they shipped someone or something like that? Oh, he said that... because it was of the uh, it was like the gravity is stronger and or like 
it like cro- it like cro- it crossed the continental divide, right? Okay. Like in shipping, which I I, I don't know if it was because of altitude change or or what, but like something about that shipping process had like a, a temporary effect on it, right? Just right. like like the like close to the equator or something. Huh. Or not not the equator, but like I think it was just because it like it it. Something about crossing the Continental Divide in the U.S., huh. uh, like the you know the mountains or it whatever, caused like a like a rainbow. Something, yeah, something caused it to to, to be funky. Mm. That's like That's stuff you never really think about, I guess. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so, do you use any PBMs yourself? Um, I used to have uh, um, a. Uh, I can't remember the model, but whatever the 25 inch one was, Ooh. 25 something or other is a model. Like the, not the XM29. So any no, it goes it goes. Um, as far as like the box ones, like the um, the ones that kind of have that black frame. Um, for that series, it went uh, 19, 20, 25, and then the, I think there was a 27 and a 29. So I had the 25, which was kind of a beast, and it was never really dialed that well, like. When I got it, I don't know if it was due to shipping or what, but it kind of had some funky geometry issues that I wasn't ever, ever able to um, to fully dial in. Right. Um, so I used that for a while, and it was, it was pretty cool. You know, it's a it's a decent um, RGB monitor. But um, I I discovered that um, for me personally, um, twenty five unless unless I'm sitting really far away from it. 25 is actually kind of on the big side for me. I think that I would have been totally okay with a 19 or 20 inch. Right. I think yeah. that when it comes to PBMs and stuff, you know, depending on where you're sitting from it, you know, generally, like, I found that I just sit closer to them in general. And you're, you're going to have more geometry issues with anything above 20 inches. I mean, even that can be pushy. Right. Um, but I, I, I really want to get a 20 inch. Probably by... it does 480p. Preferably one does 480p because it wouldn't be that big of an upgrade if it doesn't. But I, I definitely want that eventually. But like if if I got a really good deal though, I would still take like a a, a 19 inch that doesn't do 480p. But you just got so lucky with yours. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, you didn't even know what you were looking for, really. Yeah, it fell you on just, my lap. It's the time, and you just you, you just lucked into it. I don't really know why I I, I, I wish light. I wish I'd known to, you know, ask some of my local T V station connections, you know, <laughs> years ago. You know, I bet I bet three years ago they probably had it, but I just didn't know to ask for it at the time, you know? Yeah, yeah places that places that offload mass amounts of PVMs are um um, airports that are changing over to flat, flat panels. Um, oh, that's lots a good one. I never places. really thought about. I bet you those have yeah, like a of... really high burn-in rate, though. Um, some of them do. Some of them do. Like you'll see, like if they have a particular like pattern that's on there all the time. Um, but you can luck out and get good ones. Um, a lot of medical outfits. Yeah, um, yeah. We're outfits. we're going we're going to try to go to this place that is like a medical equipment reseller that that. I believe has a bunch of 20 inch PVMs. I don't think they're 480p capable, but uh, when Corey uh, comes uh, this way next month, we're we're talking about swinging by. It's 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 like an hour and a half away from me, but we're we're going to be kind of heading that way. I think, visiting right? a few places. Well, it's not really. It's going to be kind of out of the way, but we can make it worth our while because we can we can stop by several game stores and mm-hmm. stuff. So sounds fun. Yeah, there was a there was an outfit. Uh, I'm in the Phoenix area. There's an outfit in Scottsdale, which is pretty close, that had on Craigslist, like um, I think like, no, actually, you know what? It wasn't even on Craigslist. It was on eBay, and then I found out they were local, um, uh, like eighteen or twenty um, PVMs, and they don't they weren't they didn't sound like they're experts on it. They were just liquidators, but mm-hmm. they were like twenty bucks a pop, and Ooh. so, um, but at the time I didn't need one, and I didn't know anybody outside of a friend. <laughs> There's one friend, and I told him about it. Um, but outside of that, I was like, man, I really, I'm tempted just to go 
you know, rent a truck and grab all these and just have them in my garage for friends or whoever wants them. Yeah, but yeah. I just don't have that extra space. So I was just like, oh, man. You know, a couple yeah. of years ago, I would have grabbed like three of them. Like, I, I, fe I feel like, <clears throat> you know, if, if I run into a CRT, really you know, I, I want to... I want to save it, you know? Yeah. Cause, cause I mean, I mean, realistically, there is literally no one who can make use of, of a CRT nowadays, other than people who want to play games on it. Yep. yep. And so like, I feel like to, it, it has, it has to keep, stay within the gaming family, so to speak, to, to really <laughs> be appreciated, you know, yeah. or otherwise it's just going to end up in the dump. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's whenever I go to the thrift store, the the Goodwills around here, and maybe maybe nationwide, but at least the ones around here, it's a dollar for a CRT. Yeah, they, just a lot their, of them have stopped oh, taking them. They they kind of stopped taking them. Yeah, they, they, they tend they tended to be like ten dollars here. Yeah, I mean I have like a couple a, here that are like <clears throat> that are like like twelve dollars or under. Yeah, I, I found out that a that a, another thrift store around here that I'd gotten a couple of crts from um I, I i felt compelled to stop in there a few weeks ago and uh say oh man you're another one of these pre-rendered background areas yeah, this is not as good though <laughs> oh but this is a different game yeah so yeah Sikyo did a lot of pre-rendered stuff yeah the explosions um, in this are really good the explosions in this remind me a lot of uh of mercs arcade. okay I don't know, like it's just... But yeah, this one, uh, this one uh, thrift store that I had been counting on a little bit uh, uh, with with some CRTs, uh, they they stopped taking them. So it's, it's sad. Yeah, I actually found um, uh, they weren't necessarily good. Well, actually, one of them was. I found three monitors at a at a yard sale, just sitting out in the grass. I mean, I didn't know if any of them would even power up or anything. But I found three monitors. Um, there was a uh, two um, monochrome monitors, but they had composite mm. inputs. So it was kind of fun, like for my gaming setup. I just had them as like redundant monitors. Yeah. So you see what you're playing on, then you see like these monochromatic versions of like orange, yeah. and then the green one. You know, I had both of those. And then yeah. there's another one that um, was switchable between like a bunch of different modes. And um, that one actually had RGB input. And um, I can't remember if I still have that or not. But right now, um, but anyways, that was kind of fun because those were like, you know, one or two dollars a piece or whatever. But um, yeah. I since, I, I can't remember if I got it from that place or if I bought it online later. But I got, uh, um, it's like a little 13 inch um, Amiga uh, 1080 is the model number. And um, that's a great RGB monitor. It'll do composite s video rgb and then a few different flavors of rgb it's got like some sort of like a i've never played with it so i don't even know what runs on it but some sort of compatibility mode for old old uh computers i don't know much about commodores but anyways does everything i need it to the only thing it lacks is um uh stereo sound which there was a 1080s version that came out later but mine's fine so <laughs> that's what i use from my um like i don't know bench top monitor so you do a lot of modding yeah. yourself. You were kind of talking earlier that about. I think I'm. Done well, with the game. I do. I do stuff right now. I do stuff that pertains to uh, the um, consoleized CPS2 and for those USB things. But as far as doing um, modding outside of that, I haven't done much for the last maybe like four years, something like that. Um, but previous to that, I do like like custom uh like controller mods and i did like rgb mods on a few of my consoles and some custom video cables for people and stuff like that just kind of stuff that was on request you know somebody would ask me they're like hey i heard you know how to do this i'm like yeah why not but i found that um doing custom cable stuff uh it's just a pain like if you're gonna do it do like 20 or 30 of them but doing like one here two there because you got to study up on it you got to figure out which wires go where and whatnot Right. And if you're going to do it once, you might as well do it a whole bunch of times. So um, I just, I got sick of doing like onesie twosie stuff. So I haven't done that for a while. Is there anything that you'd, you'd like to do that you haven't yet? Uh, I mean, just uh, you've been, like any projects a, that you 
I mean, I don't, you don't want to give away what you're what you're working on. Oh, next, but. I'm not I'm not all secretive about it. <laughs> um, I uh, so the big struggle for me right now with the um, with the uh, um, the console is CPS two stuff is that I just don't have the time. Um, right. I've already got I've already got somebody doing um, most of the soldering for me, um, but I still got to mill the cases, which I. I don't think I'm being prideful in saying I don't think somebody else would take the same care that I do in that. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I got to do, you know, the final assembly on that and um, the testing and blah, 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 all these things. So the time still does add up, even though somebody else is helping me out with a lot of the soldering. So my goal is to um, shift into um, designing kind of a do-it-yourself kit for that because there's no way that I'm going to be able to keep up with the requests that I have. Right. I mean, I'm already right. probably like 100 systems behind, and I, don't, I doubt that I would ever be able to <laughs> even get to that in the next year or two. Um, so Hang I really want to second. Let me, up with some... My kid's crying. Oh, sure, I got to no turn on the, the baby monitor. My wife handles it. Hang on. Yep, no problem. All right, sorry about that. Um, so I'm sorry, you were, you were, you were saying. Oh, um, so I just want to come up with a kit that people, like people that are, I mean, obviously you'd have to be technically inclined, but I want to come up with a kit um, for people to, to consoleize their CPS2s using um, my USB inputs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the goal is to, is to take that off, off my burden list, you know, because right now I just feel like, I feel bad. Like every time I get a request for one of those systems, I feel bad because I know I'm likely not going to be able to fulfill it ever. Oh, um, right, right. And so <clears throat> I just be able to put that in other people's hands. And even if it's just something that other modders pick up, you know, people that are going to like, let's say, buy 10 kits from me, build them up and resell them, I don't care. Like if somebody wants to make profit off that, I don't care. I just want to be able to fulfill the need because it's become quite apparent that there's lots of people that want to buy these consoleized CPS2s. So I want to make that more available and not have me be the bottleneck because I'm like busy with family and whatever. Right. Um, and part of that is um, I've been working with um, a couple different guys on a HDMI board that can go into it. And that will be um, kind of similar to that thing that I described to you earlier about Neo Geo with that one board that guy was making, like where it picks off the video information mm -hmm. right off the chips. So it's not an analog, it's actually picking up the digital information run that to an FPGA, convert that to whatever you want, you know, squeeze it, shrink it, whatever you want to it, and then output that HDMI, and it's um, less than a frame of lag. Um, so that's in the works. So I would like to have that also be part of the do-it-yourself kit. Right. Um, to eliminate the hassle of people. As much as I enjoy CRTs. I mean, people pay a lot of money for that, just to have a console yeah. as CPS, too. Yep. You know, that are, yeah. it's like, that's, that's perfect you know yeah so that that would be nice because i just feel bad that i can't fulfill the the needs of <laughs> the people out there particularly right. in the in the fighting game community i mean like globally like i get probably i don't know i probably get two requests for one of those consoles a week and <laughs> those are from like all over the world and so i just i just need to share the load have somebody else build some <laughs> Yeah. That's cool. I mean, I would, I'd buy one. For <laughs> sure. Cool. And I, I, and I wanted, I want to do the kit such that it's pretty straightforward. I mean, obviously it's going to require some soldering right. ability and not, but I wanted to make it as straightforward as, as possible and have it be an enjoyable experience for the person who's working on it. Uh, so, I mean, I know there's a lot of people asking in the comments of the, of the, uh, the episode this week, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, I, I wanted to go buy one of the, one of the decoders and they were sold out. I told them like what I did was I just signed up for like the notify, mm. notify me on, uh, on Paradise Arcade and that seemed to work pretty good. I mean, mm, but okay. it, it's, it's really, it just doesn't. Just whenever they get done, essentially, is like when you restock. Yeah, so um, so right now, see what had happened was I actually have all the parts 
mm -hmm. in hand to, to do another batch of like 200. Um, and I was about to hand them off to my, to my soldering buddy. And um, I got thinking about um, that max strike problem that we were talking about earlier. Right. Like with the, the giant voltage spike, spikes killing those. And that just bugs me. Like as much as that's not my problem, if there's anything I can do to curb that problem, then right. I would like to do it. And so um, that's when I started working on um, in improving the 5-volt input protection, basically, mm -hmm. on that board. And so um, on my test bench, I've got a solution, but I still need to change the CAD files a little bit um, to add those parts. So I'll need to reorder circuit boards. So it's probably... I don't know. I don't think Paradise will have any for at least another month, um, unfortunately. But I want to come up with a system to where I can keep them stocked, you know, much more regularly. Because, right. um, I mean, I don't know how much business I'm losing for not keeping them in stock. But there's got to be some fallout, you know, to where people forget that they wanted it <laughs> and aren't going to order it again in the future, you know. Mm -hmm. So... But that's my goal. I think 200 units up front will help them stay stocked for at least a while. Oh, yeah. But, so. um, I saw a question earlier what our next RGB episode is. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> what's happening with that is that the next one is going to be Frame Meister Alternatives. This, the episode that we did this week, we had a whole segment that we cut out because we didn't feel like the episode was overly long. And we cut out a whole segment on the uh, analog and 8-bit do retro receiver, which is the wireless Bluetooth, blue, the Bluetooth, <laughs> Bluetooth uh, attachment for the NES. Mm. And that's going to get its own episode this Friday well, while we're at yeah. Too Many Games. Right. We, we didn't want to put the, the usual two weeks between them since they're kind of the same it's almost like an extension of this week's episode yeah um so it um you're you and you're it's it's so funny we were talking earlier like just because you were editing this episode and this is kind of extracted from that episode uh you know you already had everything in place to edit it and it's just it's funny because it's never happened before where an episode was entirely w one of us and the other person edited it. Yeah. So this is all me. You're not in this episode. No. And, and uh, I'm editing it, which is never And you happened. edited it. And you're basically done. Yeah. Yeah. I, w I want to finish it because we leave. We kind of an interesting week coming up, I guess. I mean, I guess we should like kind of kind of tease it. Uh, we're going to be uh, we obviously going to too many games this coming weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be traveling on Wednesday, and we are staying for a couple d days with uh, with our good friend Game Dave, who has been on the uh, on the show a few times and been on this uh, live stream a few times. And we will be streaming from his house next Sunday. Uh, uh, we're going to be playing some three player fingers, games next week. Fingers crossed on that. He he wants to he wants to get set up to to do some uh, weekly live streams himself. Yeah. And and we're we're going on sort of a system with that. So uh, so, assuming there are no unforeseen uh, complications, we uh, we will be streaming live from Casa de Game Dave. Yeah. Uh, next Sunday, it won't. You know, obviously, you know, usually when we do an episode, when we release an episode, the the following Sunday stream will be related to that episode. Not not so in this case, but maybe the next week will possibly be about the retro receiver. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, the, the episode. I mean, it's just it's going to be like ten minutes long. I think the retro receiver. It just didn't fit with like the. It seemed different. I guess it, it was it was different because well, in part because it's 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 new. And like people might be looking for a review specifically of that thing, yeah. Um, and they might not know it was in the episode if they just saw oh controller adapters episode. It, it, it it's it's a little different. It's new, and it was po po possibly the well, probably wasn't longer than the N sixty four segment, but yeah. and it 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 just kept changing so much. 
Um, I, I, you know, at first I didn't think I was going to be able to show all that much of its functionality and then things changed and that's explained in the episode. It's complicated and weird, but (laughs) it's, uh, it is a good device, by the way. I'll spoil that much. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what's happening. And if you are going oh, yeah. to be at H- too many games... HDMI Dreamcast from Stone Age Game, are they actually going, they are going to be selling that there, are they? No, I think they're giving a like a preview of it. But I don't know. Right. I don't I, know what... Like, you, you just entails. ordered, like, not specifically for too many games, but you just ordered a computerless uh, 1080p recording device. Right. So record straight to an SD card. It won't do 60 frames, but you can do 1080p 30 which I mean, you know, is, is better than nothing if 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 you're trying to shoot something out in the field, right? Um, and and if you get it in time, like it'd be I great. Should get it bring it, great. So then we'll bring it to too many games, and maybe we can capture some Dreamcast VGA footage. That'd be crazy, or right? V- HDMI footage. Or th- what did I say? I meant, I meant to say H- yeah, HDMI. Like that's that'll be awesome. All these systems getting. Brian, you said that you were talking about a possible, I mean, that you thought about taking like something a step further to do an HDMI Neo Geo. Or does that exist with, is, no, analog does not have a, it's not uh, HDMI Neo Geo. For the, for the Neo Geo? I don't think so. I think they just had component on that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, <clears throat> but um, I now I, I don't have any personal interest in doing stuff that pertains to Neo Geo regarding video but that guy that I talked about that made that VGA mod for it mm-hmm. um, his what he developed in terms of strategy um, for doing that with the MVS he applied that to the CPS2 as well so um, what I did was I took um, what he was doing with that, and I kind of paired that up with another guy that I know that's doing kind of a homebrew upscaler project. So both these guys are FPGA in the know type folk. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of pairing what they've both done and ultimately to have a CPS2 solution that results in um, lossless uh, HDMI CPS2. And one thing that's cool about uh, the CPS2 motherboard is that it has um, a particular um, format of digital audio on board that doesn't really get used, well, certainly doesn't get used externally, but's available. Mm -hmm. So that means that you can combine the audio and video streams purely digital for the HDMI output. So, I mean, that would be like, like, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there would be like no degradation at all. So um, that's the ultimate goal. Um, is to have a little add-in board like that. And it looks like, um, parts-wise, um, it would be under 100 bucks um, wow. for each of these boards. So, I mean, obviously somebody has to mod it into the system, but for people who are really into that, I think they would be willing to pay that much for one of those boards. So, yeah, I think it'd be it'd do quite well. Yeah, I know I would pay that much. <laughs> <laughs> I would be excited to pay that much. Because so. for a while there, I just I didn't know that anybody else was working on something like that, and I was like, man, am I gonna have to like <laughs> do it myself? Educate myself in FPGAs, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, I know I've got the mind for it, but it requires time and dedication, and I don't think I can offer that, you mm-hmm. know. So to to have somebody else that's already into it and just slide them some ideas, and they're like, oh, that sounds cool. I'm like, sweet, I will send you some CPS2 stuff. <laughs> nice well I yeah. think that's gonna I think that is going to do it for us uh, this week Brian thank you so much for, for joining us especially thanks I, for I'm, inviting me it's been fun yeah it's always fun to talk arcade with because uh, Tri doesn't know a lot about the arcade <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's always fun to have someone to, to reminisce about and like yeah, learn a bunch, whole, bunch of new CPS stuff. This whole CPS two, that's that's a that's a new word for me this yeah, week. I can't believe that. <laughs> I, I look, man, I, my mind was blown when you first started talking to me about this super gun thing. I didn't know these things existed. 
Uh, it's always been something that I've like heard about and I always wanted to have one. And now, now I finally, you know, the channel itself gives me like a reason to get into a lot of this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's, real. Uh, <laughs> that's our excuse for a lot of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, if people will make suggestions that take you down paths you would have never mm -hmm. <laughs> well it's it gets interesting yeah well I'll, I'll uh i'll keep you guys in mind whenever i come across uh cool adapters or upscalers or anything i'll send you guys a link or something yeah you had mentioned and, something. yeah we're, we're always interested in things that are just you know you had mentioned <laughs> something recently interesting to mess around with about a playstation one yeah i can't remember what it's called um let's see if i have it here Oh, uh, here it is. I don't know if you can see this or not. It's called the Waka. The w -A -K -A. Waka. The W A K A, and um, uh, Sony gave it an official part number. Oh, so okay, yeah, yeah. I saw I saw yeah. this in the the DM you sent. This kind of blew my mind. Yeah, it's it's a S L P H, zero 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 one six, and um, and so. Uh, yeah, it's it was a VGA upscaler that that Sony officially licensed to this company back in the day, and what? it's it's a cool little unit. What does it What does it take in? Um, it takes in the um, uh, I must not have the cable handy, but it would have a um, what looks like a VGA connector. Mm -hmm. um, that's all it's doing is carrying like low res RGB. Uh -huh. It's got a, a, a cable that goes from the, the PlayStation. Um, oh, wait, let me look at this thing. It's been a while since I looked at this. <laughs> Hang on a second. So it's got, okay. So it's got VGA in and out. And then it's got a dedicated PlayStation cable. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Other. Yeah. So, that's, so it just plugs into crazy. the AV multi. Yeah. On and the it back. was, yeah. I, Certainly never heard of it back in the day, but somebody mentioned it like a number of years ago, probably on Shmups. And so I just dug around on Yahoo Japan and I found one for, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. <laughs> but it does a bang up job. It's just something that never took off, you know. So it's really only for connecting to a, to a VGA mod or what, what resolution does it upscale to? I'm pretty sure it was um, 640 by 480, so not any better than the Dreamcast VGA, but right. But still, uh, I mean, for the time. Like, does it do its own deinterlacing? You know, what? I didn't experiment. Um, I didn't experiment with it that much to see how it handled deinterlacing very well. Um, I just remember when I hooked it up. I've got like an old IBM uh, CRT VGA monitor, and I just remember when I hooked it up. I was like, oh, this looks pretty great. But um, I didn't play with it much more than that evening. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, but, but it's really just, meant for it's really meant for PS One, not PS Two. Yeah, this was yeah, this was pre PS Two. So yeah. I, mean, I wonder, I wonder how well it would work with PS Two games. Yeah. I don't know. Um, a lot of it or, should four eighty i uh, PS One games. Yeah, um, I'm more than welcome more than willing to let you guys play with it so you could explore all that all you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that's fascinating. Yeah. I have seen um as far as checking out the auctions, every once in a while I think I would see them like they came like complete in box and whatever and some collector would, you know, be willing to pay a lot for it. But if you just find a loose one, like I said, I think I paid like twenty bucks for mine. So That's not um, bad. That's that's totally uh, worth it. Yeah, that's 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 worth that that's that's worth just for the novelty. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. So, cool. Well, I'll definitely uh, send you guys some stuff and info. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right. And uh, if if anybody in the chat is going to be at too many games, come up and say hi. We're going to be there well, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. And our, and our panel. I mean, if 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 you're planning to go, you know, uh, get off work early. <laughs> yeah. And come to our because, panel on Friday uh, at three I mean, thirty. I'm a, yeah, it's Friday at three thirty. Uh, I want to say the. I mean, last year didn't the show open at like noon or one o'clock? So it's like really early yeah. in the in the whole show. Um, but yeah, if if you can make it out to our to our panel, you know. Yeah, and I, we, we're times. bringing our our equipment. So if if as long as everything goes smoothly and we're able to uh, 
to shoot it, we'll have it up on the channel for the on Friday. No, yep. so we might say some things that are otherwise saved for future RGB episodes. We, or I, I don't think we're going to debut anything huge. No, at there's going to be nothing anything, debut. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've kind of played around with the thought of if I could, if I could cobble together some captures of, of some of the stuff that I've been working on gathering material of, but I, I don't know if I'll be able to do anything in time. Probably and, not. Oh, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Reggie B. Cable says to be sure to check out Hardcore Gaming 101's booth that we saw in there last year. Oh, I didn't um, know they were going to be there. It's funny because, you know, uh, Kurt, the guy who created Hardcore Gaming 101, like I had met him at another thing like in in New York, I believe. Is, I can't remember where it was where I met him at. But like we always run into the, each other at these things. I mean, Hardcore Gaming 101 is like one of my absolute favorite. I didn't, I didn't honestly, I didn't even know he was he was there. I, I, I yeah, I saw him for a, like a few minutes last year. I I, th- I yeah. feel like I saw. Him. I don't remember where I first met him, but I met him at like some place when I lived in New York. But, yeah, that's anyways, a cool site. Yeah, it's it's great. It's, it's a huge, it's a huge very resort. helpful reference for for some games that aren't talked about a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's a good starting point for any game you're researching. That's a good starting point. Yeah, I mean they truly like have just about cover just about everything. Like that, them are hardcore gaming 101 and uh, and schmupulations dot com, which is like a lot yep. of like translated uh, interviews with Japanese developers are like probably my two favorite research places. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks again, All Brian. Right. Thanks for, for joining us. Yeah. Thanks again. It was great. I enjoyed it. All right. And we'll see everybody uh, next, next week. Look for an episode on Friday and another live stream on Sunday. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.